everybody. Welcome back to the Gentlemen's Bureau podcast. Once again, I am Jedediah Barnes coming to you from Wisconsin, um, Kenosha, Racine area. Mark over there with the long hair, he's coming at you from Okinawa, Japan, and Lane's coming all the way from Germany, uh, around about Frankfurt area. And, uh, you know, this is podcast number four. Um, we've had some good, good turnout for the first three podcasts. We're already like 350 views. And we've only, we haven't even been doing this a month. And uh, we can't thank you enough for like, you know, being a part of our community. Um, feel free to drop more comments. We love hearing feedback. And, uh, you know, right away, let's, what do you guys want to talk about off the bat? Uh, I do want to say last episode, there was some, t- uh, there's some audio cut out. Uh, that's my fault. Actually, it's probably YouTube's fault because everything was squared away and then I uploaded it and there was no audio. So <laughs> sorry about that. But uh yeah thanks guys for subscribing and thank you for tuning in uh the amount that you guys do that's all i want to say first uh first and foremost so yeah, yeah. And i'll piggyback on all that so good so so mark thanks, did Mom. you figure out <laughs> right <laughs> mark did you figure out what was going on with the car or is just just, just die and you don't know what happened oh yeah uh for all you guys listening don't know, but I had car trouble again, and I showed up late to this. Uh, well, I'm not entirely sure what's going on. I'm gonna have I have a guy. Everybody's got a guy, you know. Uh, yeah. I'll pay you, like, I had to X talk to my guy today. Some beer. Yeah. <laughs> I got a guy, and I'm taking the car over to him later, um, sometime early in the morning, and then he's gonna basically tell me if I can fix it for a good price or I should just get a new car and the car is like 15 years old ish so oh wow yeah I think it's time for a new car anyways what kind of car is it it's a Nissan Moco yeah it's a little (laughs) tiny K car Hmm. in Japan they have these uh like your license plate also determines this too. Like you can tell it easier, I guess, but a K car is just a really smaller engine car. They're super gas efficient. So I got one and I can probably drive to the moon and back on a full tank. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> it wasn't so old. Yeah. 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 That's, That's weird too. Cause like, I still think that I have a newer car, but it's a 2011. So like that's nine years. That's actually 10 years old now. Cause we're in the fall. And it comes out a wow. year early. And I'm like, wow, that, that's already 10 years old. But, like, it's still, like, such a new car to me. Because, like, my first car when I got it was already, you know, 16 years old. Because it was, just, you know, same age as me, basically. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> I missed that car. Yeah. I had to uh, call my dude today because... So, there's, like, an annual inspection on your vehicle in Germany. And... uh well, we're trying to sell one of them, and you have to have an inspection within, like, X amount of days before you can sell the vehicle. Like, it has to be up on its shit before, I think, like, 90 days. If it's an older than, like, 2010 or something. So, uh, my wife has this, like, beater. So, we took it through inspection today, and then, of course, like, they failed it on everything because that's just what they do. They, like... <laughs> They want you to go out and spend money on the economy and just fix your car, even though, like, most of the stuff doesn't really need to be fixed. So, yeah. like, so she uh, she got that done today, and then they they said that she needed, like, an oil pan, like, something with an oil pan, and then she needed, uh, she needed something about the lights. I don't know. Th- these guys are just making stuff up at this Light point. Light fluid. And- <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, it was some blink of fluid. And so uh, I, so she took it to like this like place that pretty much all the Americans go. And so they, and the place is kind of like well known for like, you know, overpricing. And uh, yeah. they were like, yeah, it's going to be, so they were like doing all the costs and then it got to the oil pan and they were like, yeah, it's going to be about twelve hundred dollars for an oil pan and like my wife was like okay like because she doesn't know especially like Mm -hmm. female and everything and she told me that and i was like dude what the fuck no no way 
twelve hundred dollars for a like O2 Honda Civic oil pan just for just for the oil pan. I'm like, no, that's not happening. Like <laughs> there's so many third brand companies that make other uh right. that make oil pan like different just they're off brand, you know, they're not yeah. uh, OEM. So I I know a guy here in Germany <laughs> and I, I hit him up. Oh like the guy, you know. Like Everybody Mark has Bailey. a guy. Everybody's got a guy, dude. And I hit him up. I was like, hey, man, they're trying to, like, fuck us for this. Like, can you get us something a little cheaper? And he's like, yeah, dude, what the fuck? Like, he knew right away. He's like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> like, he, like, figured it out. So, you yeah. You buy a new car for that. Going through that. Dude, yeah, it's not worth it for an O2 Civic. Like, what am I going to sell it for? Jeez. I'm not I'm even going <laughs> to sell it for that. Like, what? It's ridiculous. <laughs> so, yeah, car problems. Nice. I promise, Mark. Me and Logan did not fly to Japan and mess with your car. Okay, we didn't do anything. <laughs> oh, okay, uh, I don't believe you. <laughs> so now, don't think now we. Yeah. Really suspicious. yeah. <laughs> so don't think we did because you didn't. Uh, I leave my keys. Oh no, I leave my keys <laughs> out too. Shit. <laughs> yeah, you do. I mean. Yeah. But... <laughs> oh god. Oh shit. That's yeah. funny. That sucks though, dude. That sucks. Yeah, but yeah, you guys, you guys have like a automotive place that's like close to the base that kind of fucks all the americans too yeah absolutely yeah, well yeah they have that over here and like they're the only people that like advertise in english so i was like oh maybe i should go there and i absolutely never doing that again yeah <laughs> that's how i that's how I, I was like okay i need to find a guy and then i found one thank god but yeah i got a guy for like all the uh, electronics, and then I got an engine guy, so I have two guys really. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's always good yeah. to have a guy. When That's I right. first, uh, when I first moved up up to Racine, I needed uh, brake work done, and my muffler was kind of loud, so I was I went to a shop right down the road, really close to where I'm living. And I was like, hey guys, I need you to you know do a brake pad, might as well do an oil change while you got it up on the hoist, and and make sure my muffler and quiet my muffler down a little bit. And they estimated it was going to be like five hundred dollars. And I was like, "Where's all this pricing coming from?" And it was like a hundred and twenty dollars to do the muffler, which that yeah made sense, you know, welding, grinding, that kind of stuff, you know, hundred twenty bucks, sure. Twenty four, twenty twenty four bucks for the oil change, because you know that's for much oil in and it's cheap. Yeah, yeah, you know, a lot of places they'll charge you just for like um, if you're getting other work done. More than just an oil change, yeah. they'll just charge you for like the oil and the and the filter. And then it was gonna be like four hundred dollars for the brakes. And I was like, yeah. excuse me, <laughs> no. Yeah, no. That makes sense. No. How how fucked up were your brakes? They just needed new pads. No rotors. Jeez. No new rotors. No, no, just pads. <laughs> Jeez, which man. are like twenty dollars a set. Hmm. Maybe sixty dollars a set if you want to get the good ones. Was that labor included? Yeah, but still four hundred dollars. So the next shop I took it to, actually I didn't even take it to a shop. I think me and my dad just did it for like a hundred bucks total. I had them do the muffler, but the rest of that was like fuck that. I was like, do the muffler. I'm gonna go home tomorrow. Me and my dad will do my oil change and my brakes. Mm-hmm. They that were bad. About, yeah, that was good about like living in the states. My dad would just do all like anything right. I really needed done. I was like, yeah, because I, I don't know yeah. jack about fuck about cars really. I know a handful of stuff and that's it. Mm-hmm. I know what things should be and where they should be and like what makes what sound, but that's it. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. There's way yeah, more I, that goes into that, but I, I don't know anything about it. <laughs> yeah. I would have just done my brakes and oil myself like every time I've needed to do them, but you know, I'm in an apartment. They made it very clear in my uh, leasing contract that I cannot work on my car in the parking lot. And I'm like, mm-hmm. shit, I just don't have a place to do it. I have to use my scissor jack for my like you know spare tire stuff and i'm like i don't really want to do that i got but a I just... funny story about okay. uh people people working on their cars in parking lots uh whenever i was in college the apartment place that i was at you couldn't work on your car at all but there was this redneck with an el camino i hate to say he's a red he, he, he's a good old boy let's say that he's not there necessarily a redneck he's a good old boy 
And god damn, he didn't give a shit. He fucking threw his oil all over the parking lot several times. <laughs> they came out. I remember they yelled at him so many times, they just called the cops on him. They just started calling the cops on him. Cause, oh, my God. Oh, he treated the parking lot like it was a garage, so he cranked the radio, and he's fucking singing White Snake while he's working on his engine. <laughs> it was great. Oh, my oh, God. That guy was a awesome. good old boy. I've That's done that right. a few times at the dorms here. Well, yeah. And uh, <laughs> no one complained. I did it in the parking garage. Like, I was doing my breaks one night, which took forever. And I was just like, fuck it. Turned on my, cranked up the volume, and it, like, echoed, because it was a pretty pretty welly sound uh, <laughs> parking garage. It's, like, nice. underground and everything. I was just like, fuck it. <laughs> I got to get this done, so. Isn't there just something, like, super manly about, like, either working on your car, or just working on something, cranking the radio, and just having a good time doing it? Drinking oh, some beers. Love that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, man. And then you got yeah. that one friend that doesn't do shit in the background. He's just like, yeah, man, looks good right there. Like, you're like, hand me the fucking socket wrench or whatever. Yeah, and then he gives you a pair of pliers. Yeah. Yep, yep. <laughs> oh, my God. Did you guys yeah, ever, like, just... get yelled at when you were kids? Like, you were, like, dude, working on dude. helping your dad? Come on. Of course. Yeah. You would just be like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, are you yelling at this me? This is a you hammer. Know? What? What is wrong with you, boy? <laughs> Mine was always like, he would tell me to point the light, and I would do my best to point my light. Yeah. But like, he always forgot that I can't point it through him. He'd be like, get where I can sit. I'm like, motherfucker, you're in the way. <laughs> yeah, every time. Like, every I'm sorry time, that yeah. this doesn't go through you. <laughs> yeah, I was I was a, uh, a light holder. And it, eventually it became just wherever my eyes are going, just pointed at that. And then I'm, What's like, this? playing with the fucking thing, like, shining it at the dog. <laughs> God, never thought I'd get out of high school, but, you know, whatever. Never thought I'd get out of high school. Oh, my God. Good so, time. yeah, while, while you were struggling to get home with a car problem, Lane and I were looking over some topics to talk about, and one thing I wanted to bring back up was the Neuralink, because... When Lane mentioned it last podcast, I had no idea what it was. I hadn't heard anything about it. But now that I looked at it more, it's not just for, like, you know, people with you know, mental illnesses like uh, dementia and memory loss and that kind of stuff. It's also just, like, an application, you know, kind of like a Fitbit in your head is what he said. So, like, you can use it to control, like, your phone, your computer and shit. And I'm like, wow, that'd be kind of crazy. Like, I, I don't know what that, what would that look like? What would that feel like? Well, like right now, they're they're mainly focused on for like yeah. I guess trial human subjects. It would be for people with uh, underlying or not underlying, but like people with a uh, certain brain uh, malfunctions and stuff. Like I guess that's mainly what they're looking at. But like, dude, well, if, that's if, how if, they're... It, if it's if it's applied to the to the average brain, like we're talking about like telekinesis shit. Like, if somebody yeah. else has, because everything really is um, electrical signals, like, mm -hmm. in your brain uh, to, to outside your brain, everything is just electrical signals. Like, I don't know, it'd be crazy to, how to far have do you that. Think it would be, like, how far do you think it's going to go? And then how far, like, am I going to be able to drive home and just think about, hey, start my oven at 450 degrees to preheat it right because everything's everything's almost linked in right now we just have exactly. to use our phones right exactly. so crazy it could get and it's going to get that far someone's gonna try it especially if elon musk is heading the front on this thing oh yeah and he doesn't die anytime soon it's gonna fucking happen and like what i said last podcast was like if we don't do it as I'm not saying like we as Americans, just because Elon Musk is from, well, he's moved his shit to Texas. But like, if we don't do it as Americans, you know damn well a country with little to no morals like China is going to get get a hold of doing it. Like, and they're oh, going yeah, yeah. to lead the front on it. And it's like, super people. I don't know how it's going to go because 
my issue with it is the security part. Like, yeah. what are you, if, if I'm able to read somebody's mind, it's like, okay, there's got to be some kind of system in place to where that's like right. filtered. And like, what about like even past security? Like, what if you just get too close to an electromagnet? Is it just going to like fry your freaking brain? Yeah. You know? Who knows? Yeah. That, these are the questions. What, man. If you, what if you just like go through, you know, the freaking, um, those like big like uh, booth style things at the airport where they have to put your arms up and it like scans you top to down for like any explosive material and shit. What would one of those do to that chip? Huh? Yeah. Cause mild uh, these cake. are the things that he's gonna have to definitely think of. And yeah. Oh, it I'm makes sure me think do. of uh it makes me think of when he released the cyber truck and he's like, and these windows are, are fucking bulletproof. bulletproof. And then he threw a rock and it just shattered. I'm like that makes me not yeah. have any faith in what you're going to... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it was a prototype. It was a prototype, for the record. It was. Are, are they bulletproof now? I don't know. I don't think they're actually in production yet until next year sometime. He has so, one, though, right? Of course he, he has one. He, he drives he that thing. I would, too. That, I is won't. A, that is a space car. If you were thinking about the future, that's what that is. Like, everything I, he's doing is the future. <laughs> but, honestly. I just liked what his response was. He'd be like, he'd be like so why did you make it bulletproof with bulletproof glass why the fuck not <laughs> it can do it i can why not this day and age right that's a that's an urban tactical vehicle right there a civilian yeah. urban vehicle like jed you better yeah. pre-order that shit where you're at i mean i'm super broke but damn yeah i want one for sure i want to paint like a studebaker too with like the wood paneling and shit not <laughs> actual kind of like paint it on that'd be really cool before but, uh, we get off the link thing what are like what do you, what do you think are some things that that's going to change like just going to the grocery store like how much is that going to change and also like use dude, that in combat change, even dude you it could change everything from waking up to going to sleep to uh like VR to right. like dude just your whole dude, world yeah. would be upside down like if you think about it and this this is going to be getting into some, some more deeper shit, but, like, what, is, what are we in right now? Like, some people think we are already in a, a simulation. simulation. So it's like, is this going to take us deeper into a simulation? Oh, like, wow, sim, wow, simception? Wow, wow, wow. Thanks for the sound <laughs> effects, Jed. That's what we need. Like, is oh, this going to take us into a like an inception type of thing where we just go deeper into the rabbit hole or I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think, but I'm, I don't know. I think it'd be really cool. Like if it becomes like, if we can assure that it's safe and like unhackable and like has good security, I think it'd be so cool. Like what if it could just be like, Hey, uh, kind of depressed. I'm just going to turn that off. And then you, and it's off, you know, it's like, oh, I'm having trouble going to sleep. Uh, Wake me up at 5 a.m. and go to sleep, and you just pass out. You know? Yeah, what if you're like, what if you're like, I'm in a lot of pain. Turn off my pain receptors. Well, yeah. Yeah. That's what if you can actually like hook up to the part of your brain that like controls your vision, and instead of having like a retinal implant for like a, you know, a HUD, we just had like a brain implant that connected to that that part of the brain. You just put like, it's this time over here. There's a little map of your surroundings, you know, all that kind of cool. Be, I think it might be really cool in like six years. It six sounds years. cool. Like, it yeah. sounds great, but that's like with a lot of things that sound great. They're yeah. not everything, dude. There's so much vetting that has to be done with this thing. There's so much research that, like, if you think it's going to come out anytime soon, like you haven't yeah. really grasped the whole concept of like mm -hmm. security on this thing because like you can okay. wish it comes out as soon as possible you can want it as soon as possible but that's like what was it that i was looking at um but also would you like want to be a beta tester for it you know like what if elon musk calls you tomorrow like, yeah hey lane do you want to beta test this neural link no. how much would it take how much signing bonus would it take for you to be like yeah sure put it in my head oh Nah, I, yeah, I couldn't I'm, sign off on that either. I'm uh, I, like those people that want to go to Mars. That's what I was yeah. thinking about. Like those people that want to go to Mars. I'm the kind of guy 
that doesn't buy a product right away. Yeah, I'll you want to see how it plays out. See how it plays out and get the kinks in. And personally, with like my religious views, I don't think I would ever get a fucking Neuralink unless hmm. I was really not functional in the head unless i was like completely brain dead stupid like i had a car accident or something some kind of accident to where i was not functioning properly like mm -hmm. i don't know okay i, don't know, I man. think just on like, that religion part on that religion part what if what if this neuralink uh you you still somewhat you like you think normal okay but uh you have maybe whatever religion you are that whole script or code or conduct or whatever is downloaded into your head and it doesn't it doesn't necessarily tell you to conduct yourself this way but if you don't it'll just give you a little reminder you can do whatever you want i'm just going to give you a little reminder that that's not a good thing would you, would like you want that that extra little ego in your head no nah, because I, I can if i need a computer to tell me what good morals are then we have a huge fucking problem. <laughs> I, like, we as as myself, we have a huge fucking problem. Like, I have a huge fucking problem. If I need a computer to give me uh, hints, uh, like, that's bad. Uh, uh, no, I can see what you that. mean by when it comes to, like, if I'm on a diet or something. And this might, yeah. you know, there's, oh, there's, cool. many, there's many benefits that could come of this thing. Like, if I'm on a diet and, and I'm craving a, a big triple chocolate fat ass cake <laughs> like i could maybe use code or whatever i don't know how this thing's gonna work but like yeah. if, it, if it's if it's i input a coding and it goes into my in my brain and it and it you know does its thing i'm not a fucking okay i'm not a scientist i'm just saying <laughs> and it does its thing i'm just gonna say that and it does its thing because i had no fucking idea ones and zeros <laughs> it could it could you know, I could see that being beneficial where it would be like, no, you don't want that. Like, here, eat some yeah. cabbage or something. Just like remove your craving, replace it with something else. Yeah. That'd be kind of cool. But yeah. at the same time, like, I want there to be a challenge. Like, mm -hmm. I want, because then there's a reward system. Like, if, uh, if yeah. myself, if I can, like, fight off the urge to, to um, not eat that cake and I do it, I'll feel a hell of a lot better in myself and more confident in myself than if I just was like, yeah, but it was an early talk. And it's like, yeah, you're going to look good. Yeah, you're going to probably feel good. But it's like you're not going to feel good in the way of a reward system where you've earned it, you know? Well, yeah. Like, but you did, like, stick with it and not, like, turn off the program that helped you to diet. So that, I think I, I do agree there would be less than turn it off if you're using – that's what I'm saying, but like, you know, if the craving is bad enough, working. you know, if it's working, mm. then you wouldn't want to. But like, you know, you could just yeah. be like, you know what, I might cheat. I might have a cheat day tomorrow. I'm just going to turn it off now so that I can do a cheat day but tomorrow. But you wouldn't have that thought. That's what I'm true. saying. You, you would that's not true. have that thought of like, yeah, but uh, maybe I could just. No, that's gone. You've already put the code in. You're yeah. doing this. You're not going back on it. So like that, I guess that would be a positive oh, that would come out. but then but then what if people do that too much you know they do that so many like uh program things that just become robots hey i guess that's what they asked for yeah i'm sorry well, think, okay so <laughs> with diets we're not okay with that but who are you okay with maybe putting a neural link in a person like that is Let's just say they've already committed crimes before, and they're going to maybe they're going to do it again. This we is put where a we get into them. It's a deterrent. This is where things you know, like get interesting. A, yeah, well, so that's you'd have to offer it. Shit, you know. Yeah, you'd have to offer it as like an incentive. It's like you know, you're sentenced to 25 years to life. But if you get this neural link that will stop you from committing crimes, we'll let you out in 15 years on parole. I mean, at that point, you know, in that situation, it's like, fuck, the rest of my life in jail or a little chip in my brain telling me not to commit crimes. It's the whole thing is just weird to me because yeah. who wants or, you know, everybody's going to want this thing, right? People. Well, 
Well, I'd say okay, everybody maybe, like not twenty me, and below. Obviously, like, but people, yeah, a lot of they're people gonna want, want this thing. Who is to say that the government can't come in and fuck with your head? Who's to say and that that's noted. what they want, bro? Literally, what do you think they're doing with like? We, okay, this goes back to last podcast, like TV, television, like yep. the programming, the the you know they feed off your emotions they play with your emotions why like who is to say that they would not have any kind of like they'd come in and they'd be like hey uh, mr musk uh, we'd like to sit down with you and talk about this Neuralink thing we think we have some uh, interesting ideas we'd like to uh, discuss with you and then they'd become like jeff bezos who is on the uh national defense, defense. council it's like mm-hmm. It's like there, there comes a point where they're going to have control like Facebook or YouTube or something. There's going to be some kind of monitoring system. There's going to be some kind of government involvement because the government yeah. has to be involved with everything. Yep. And it's like, they sell oh, out. He ends I, up selling a ton of Neuralinks in yeah. you know, XYZ and it's country. Like, it's like you see and, what's going on with the information <laughs> getting sold uh, to China. It's like with Facebook and and pretty much TikTok. Google everything, TikTok yeah, it's like who why the fuck wouldn't China get a hold of this information? Like they're, hey we have really the them right we have now. the neural pathway codes. Sorry Mark, but go yeah. ahead. I was I was gonna say yeah, like we're just seeing them fight back on this now, after how many years of them getting away with it, and yeah. then what's their next step? Are they like? If we do something like this, or they're not going to stop. They're just going through different avenues, right? Mm-hmm. Like that's what we see, yeah. and we're yeah. we're fighting an uphill battle, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, think of, like oh, one thing that I thought of when Mark, when you mentioned like being able to, like drive home, you're like, hey, turn my stove on to 400. Up. I just imagined that like scene from Matilda, when she first starts like getting her powers down, and she starts like pointing at lights and shit, and just turning them on <laughs> with her like little powers. You're just like walking you your in your house, you know snap your fingers and like you know your radio starts up the ac kicks on youtube pulls up the 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 show you've been meaning to watch yeah Yeah, it sounds very relaxing it sounds convenient so it sounds like easy times and when i say easy times i'd like to say the quote uh easy times make weak men weak men make hard times hard times create strong men strong men create easy times so yeah, it's there you like, go. it's a big cycle. And it's like, how easy can we make it for us? I feel like that's all we've been doing, like throughout throughout history. And it's like when when shit hits the fan, like I mean, really hits the fan. Are we gonna be ready? Like, are we gonna be prepared to even take it mentally? Like, like okay, today, let's just say China drops a fucking nuke somehow. It it beats our fucking air, aerial defense systems. They drop it drops a nuke on fucking Chicago. Oh okay. God, I'm gone. It's like, are we fucking ready for what's about to happen? Are we gonna be prepared for this? Because two percent. It's not like this isn't out of the realm of possibilities. It's like it's like we've had it easy for too fucking long. Yeah. And like, like yeah, you say like that's the point is to like make it easy to live so you can you know pursuit of happiness make it a little easier on people i agree yeah i agree but like uh there's gonna be a point where some shit goes down and i don't think we're gonna be ready for it and Mm -hmm. yeah one thing that i heard like every time another like world war ii soldier dies is something that i hear is like you know when our veterans die we we start to forget how bad war is which kind of makes us more likely to go back into it like a World War Three, like Benjamin Franklin, no, I think it was Winston Churchill said, "I know not what weapons World War Three will be fought with, but World War Four will be fought with sticks and stones." Uh, yeah, saying, like, I know it's going to be a reset. Well, yeah, it's like yeah, it's going to be like a total reset, dude. Because yeah. like all the shit that we have right now, it's like even even before you get to God. nuclear. Even before you get to nuclear, the amount of fucking ordnance we have. I saw this shit the other day. It was um, essentially a missile, right? But it's a smart missile. 
sorry, fires out and it knows where the target is, like in the air. And once it gets to a certain distance away from that target, it'll spin out all these like little tungsten projectiles, hundreds of them per missile, and just create a whole cloud of very fast moving, super hard projectiles that'll just shred things. It was crazy. Took a drone out to little pieces in like seconds. And I was like, now imagine that. But instead of hitting a drone in the sky, it's just raining down from the lower atmosphere. Like yeah. uh, tungsten this big, going that fast, that's going to cause damage. Oh, yeah. Uh, and flex tape speaking, won't solve Speaking it. of that, though, guys, I don't know. Um, I get a little bit of news uh, more so from here, like this side of the world. India and China are just at each other's throats, right? On their border dispute. Have you guys oh, seen anything about this? No. A little no, while okay, ago. Let me, yeah. yeah, there was there was one. There was a, killed a bunch of India, and, India's people at the yeah, border. Yeah, India killed quite a few of theirs, but they didn't report any deaths, and they didn't even report anything was really going on for a while. Uh, but that was about a month ago, two months ago, I think. Uh, now, India was watching china was like taking a little because they have this like neutral area i guess uh and china was like creeping forward in this neutral area india said fuck all that noise and they sent in like special forces and just fucking pushed them all out like took the whole mountain and said okay piss off you're not coming in at all the same neutral area no more this is ours mm. blah 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 i was like oh my god India is going to, and I guess this new policy that India is adopting is like the best defense is, best defense is a good offense or something. I'm maybe mm-hmm. misquoting what they're talking no, about. No, it sounds like, yeah, it's a quote. Yeah. There's nothing uh, quite as effective. Like, that's, that, that's quotable. Yeah. yeah. There's a, <laughs> and, there's yeah, a, so. They got that going on, and uh, yeah, that's that's what I think could lead to like World War Three for sure, just because they both are two massive countries with nukes, and they wait a minute, uh, they're at India? each other. India, India has nukes. Dude. Yes, and lack of toilet paper. <laughs> well, you know, happens. Isn't that crazy? How like they yeah. they'll have nukes, but they lack toilet paper. It's like that's where we're at in the world right now like it's there's crazy. a commercial about poo in the loo instead of pooping on the streets in india something wow. they're really trying to change and they have nukes <laughs> now I, I know it's not like everybody's pooping on the streets but there's like a big difference in class rank of people that are doing that but yes yeah, those people have nukes <laughs> it's freaking wild wow. so I like how uh every- Go ahead, Jim. Well, like, one thing I was just thinking of was, like, isn't India one of our allies? Yeah. Yeah, and, are. like, well, one of our allies. Um, But I was just thinking, like, I saw a statistic the other day, like, if we increase, if we decreased military spending by 85%, we would still spend the most on our military in, like, the whole world. Hmm. Yeah, which is yeah. crazy. Like why are we spending that much? There's a lot of much things into that America? though. Yeah, yeah there's there's a lot though, because it's not a it's not like oh we could just spend less money and still you know but we we're out there policing a lot of the world with good reason. Don't I mean I'm not gonna bitch about that. Is I mean there's a lot of things that they they need America in some of these countries to you know prevent other things from going on. You know what I mean? Uh, think about think about just um, what a deterrent America is right now to uh, China coming at Taiwan. True. Yeah. Yeah. True. But and, like at a certain uh, point, we have to think back and like, look, is it our responsibility to keep the whole world in check? Like, I understand if like you know for keeping peace and balance, you know, so that the world doesn't erupt into a war, but like. Is that really? Is it really our job to make sure that doesn't happen? Like, can't we take care of ourselves first? I think we have a lot more problems here at home. You, you think know? we have a lot of problems at home, Jed? All right. What do you think? Besides the current uprising yeah, yeah, I, of yeah. rioters and like COVID, but like homelessness yeah, and, is still super high. 
Um, we're still in a whole lot of debt, which, I mean, we could probably chew through pretty quick if we decrease military spending like half. Um, uh, Did you know that the majority of the debt is, uh, is like people like you and me? People that like we're still paying off our debts. So like true when they calculate the U.S. debt, they calculate every everybody's like total yeah. debt. And it's like I think I don't know the numbers, so I'm not going to say anything else about it because um, no, yeah, I know there were some mean, numbers like, that I did, and and like the government spending was probably it wasn't a whole lot in, in comparison to the whole total. Yeah, but that was you, I looked at. Yeah. But at the same time, I think I think maybe not even just that, if we just had way more accountability of where you're spending money, uh, the government is, then maybe we would also see some of these numbers change drastically. Yeah, yeah. For oh, sure. I mean, we're all from Illinois. We, we know how much of a problem embezzling has been for, for certain government <laughs> officials. I mean... Dixon ended up like misplacing like three million dollars that got embezzled by a treasurer. Um, yeah, pretty sure it was Blagojevich who who embezzled a few a few million. And then you know you'll have these politicians that they'll like be a governor, and they'll be using like their governor's salary to like pay off all of their bills for like their mansion and set up a trust fund for their kids. But at the same time, they'll be taking helicopter rides back and forth between their house and the government mansion. And like they'll be putting that on the on the taxpayer, and it's like, well, mm -hmm. you don't, you could just stay in one of them for a while, yeah. take a car once or twice. You, know, you really need to fly <laughs> do, a helicopter the whole, all the time. Yeah, you gotta. Yeah. You gotta what what was it? It was uh, the last three governors spent more time in Chicago than they did in their office. Probably. Yeah. That's crazy. It's like it's down in Springfield, not not up in Chicago. Yeah. They I, act like they act like they work out of Chicago. It's like yeah. Yeah, maybe well, that's the days majority out of, the year. of the people that vote them in, you know. That's true. Very like true. if you I wish people knew like I mean besides the people that uh are where we live, like I wish people knew like how much of Illinois is not Oh yeah. Like city, dude. Like it's mm -hmm. fucking crazy. Like, it would be a red state if Chicago was on its yep. own. Yeah, I've said for a long time and shit. that they should, just, they should just cut out Chicago land. Like, you know, Chicago, the suburbs, just cut out that whole little corner. You should be like, that's your own district of Columbia, just like D.C. Now it's Chicago, D.C., and then we have Illinois by itself. I have always said that that might work out better for, for both parties, you know, for them and for us. Because mm -hmm. it's just so different, too. Like, it's not like um, like California, where, like, you know, even outside of the major cities, it's still pretty, you know, metropolitan, you know, urban kind of environment. Like, in Illinois, it's literally very, very urban, very, very rural. And there's a hard line there somewhere. And it's just, like, oh, the difference yeah. is astounding. I think uh, the uh, the line gets drawn around like Ottawa mm -hmm. and up. I, I could say that, yeah. That, yeah that's like Ottawa and up. So you have to, you still have to get to Joliet, and then you get to, you know, all that shit. Oh, of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, we're, we're preaching to each other. We're just preaching to the choir. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's what we do. We get a bunch of volunteers and some shovels, and we start digging a trench between us, us <laughs> yeah, and there Chicago. You go. Uh, I found out that... Uh, Ghislaine Maxwell's trial is going to be July 2021. Why are they pushing the trial back that far? Do they want to give her more time to be suicide? I mean, uh, commit suicide? <laughs> God damn it. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I don't know. They released like 2,000 <laughs> pages of shit. Uh, and I guess like in one of the documents, it was saying that uh, Paris Hilton was like, she was they were scouting Paris Hilton. She was she was like gonna make Paris Hilton like Epstein's little side piece. God, that's well, yeah. fuck, and I got man. I don't know why they didn't. But, what is yeah. this? Some shit I heard. Imagine imagine being Paris Hilton and reading that story right there. I'd be like, he wanted to do what? 
<laughs> Who was after me? Hey, oh um, in some positive news, they found like a bunch of missing children recently. Like almost a hundred missing children have turned up in like semi trailers in Georgia and like some other places. And it's like a hundred missing. And you know what the media? Not even no, covering. They're not covering shit. They got more important things than a bunch of missing children just showing up all of a sudden. Yeah. yeah, one of the biggest uh, like child trafficking rings in America um, is being like slowly dis man like this torn apart, unraveled, and the this media's number. just like, "Yeah, we're just gonna pretend we didn't see that and keep pushing these stories about how racist the cops are and how bad COVID is." Because yeah, that's man, they gotta get headlines, you know. Yeah, oh, get... God, you imagine how many happy parents there are, though. I mean... Oh, that's nice. I, uh, that's kids, just something but, great to think fuck. about right there. I guess those kids are getting back with their parents or grandparents yeah. or whoever, you know, somebody mm -hmm. that loves them, somebody that's, you know, going to have their best interests in heart. Yeah, I think some yeah. of them have been gone for, like, years. So at that point, you know, when they come back, it's like, they're alive. You know, what it's if not they've like, been oh, they got found. What have they been subjected to? Oh, dude, I don't know. I don't like, want to know. Probably stuff like, that no kid should have to go through. Yeah. That's like a, that's a, that's a getting bad getting thing. yeah like your like like your dad comes home from war or something shit just changed about him you know yeah. like he used to be like this ah uh, it's like now he's quiet they're probably fucked up dude for life man like oh yeah nobody nobody traffics a kid to have him go play like I just want to watch him Barney's play on the playground you know what I mean yeah. I don't know. Maybe Michael Jackson. I don't know. Yeah, he, he, it was a ranch. You know? He would have had a couple of kids locked away. He's like, let's go ride on the train. And they're like, no, this is like the seventh time. I just want to go home. What's the South Park? Uh... <laughs> come on, Blanket, come on. Fucking. <laughs> so oh my god, dude. I I oh, did god, actually see ridiculous. his nose is falling off and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Jackson. <laughs> there was a good there was a good uh south park skit that came across on iphone the other day carmen just like runs up to tolkien's house and he's like hey i need you to get your bass guitar and come over to the house we're starting a band and he's just like i don't have a bass guitar and he's like you definitely have one in your basement your family's african your family's yeah. black you definitely have a bass guitar in your basement. Bass. and he shows up with it <laughs> and he's like okay butters uh, let me get a beat you know it's a decent beat He's like, okay, token. Let's get a let's get a nice smooth bass track. He's like, but I can't play bass. He's like, how many times do we have to be over this? You play, you can play bass. And he's just like, he's just like, fine, whatever. I'm just gonna fail and show him up. And then he just starts with a very smooth bass track. He's like, oh fuck shit, god damn. It. <laughs> oh my ass. This South Park is just blatantly racist, but in like funny ways. Dude. They they get away with it. They've been doing yeah. it for years. They get yeah, away man. with it. At they call point, they call everybody out on their PC ness. Oh, I love yeah. it. Yeah. PC principle. Yeah. <laughs> no. Just, uh, <laughs> okay. I love how they put a spin on everything, dude. Like everything. they make it like what everybody they take so what they'll do is like they'll take like current shit and they'll make it like the most extreme. Like PC principle. It's like now his babies are PC, and it's like this is what things are like when you make everything PC. It's like ha ha ha, and then like with the whole weed thing. Yeah. Oh man, dude, it's just so funny. And they've they've established themselves. Um. Back in ninety, back in the nineties, bro. So it's like, are you really gonna cancel them now? Because they've been doing this since the nineties. Yeah. And their ratings like, are too good. The original yeah. PC wave, right? That went back in the nineties. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's actually there's a movie i don't know if you guys have seen it but it's called pcu like pc oh. university oh i wow. recommend it george clinton's in it it's a great it's a great film he, he plays clinton. a little bit george clinton and the funkadelics i believe that's it yeah yeah ba oh amazing yeah. amazing jed uh, go guys, uh go get yourself sold to work there's what? there's you guys gotta, gotta do some homework what i want you guys that? to watch that movie it's great because you'll you get to see like what the 90s were for pc and what they are now and you're like oh so this died out and then came back okay mm. yeah maggot brain you've heard that right by funkadelic maggot maggot brain they oh, 
Who's the George George Clinton plays uh play, oh okay no forget about that George Clinton does this show where he talks about um it's called like Tales from the Tour Bus or Tales from the Bus or something oh. and it's all like animated and all these musicians talk he talks about a little bit of his experience that dude was crazy out on the road I recommend that too that's awesome he he talks about like how he how he quit drugs is like he had this giant like crack ball with him so he, he was quitting crack so his his whole thing was like I'm going to take this crack ball and hold on to it and I'm after the tour is over with that's my reward like I hold out for so long and then I get I get this big old crack ball at the end and he talks about like how it finally ended the crack ball has been like broken apart and it's like smaller now and but he's like I'm going to do this uh mm-hmm. So he sets the mood. He sets. He he lowers the lights. He lights candles. He has his big old crack ball. He gets in like a little lotus position to sit on the uh, hotel bed, and he's he's re- he's getting ready to smoke this crack, right? Oh, he starts going to town on the crack, and the candles light the curtain on fire, and fucking he's so he's trying to and he's butt naked too. So he's oh trying to put out the he's trying to put out the fire, but he's in the lotus position. So he falls off the bed. The fire alarm starts going off. Right outside his door is another office building. He's butt naked in front of this big old office bu- meeting building. Oh my god! Oh. and the dude, dude is a riot. Wow. The dude is a riot. I think I've seen his tales from the tour bus thing. He had uh, he had Mike Tyson on there think was in that, Eminem he had a bunch of people on there I think. was that on was, um MTV back in the day uh, it was fairly recent like maybe two yeah. years ago I think it's a more of a recent type of YouTube podcast it's almost like a podcast right yeah because they have so yeah. many people that come on and tell their t- tales yeah. and everything it was really Dude, cool speaking of Mike Tyson have you guys seen his training videos lately no I've seen a little bit I've seen Bro. just enough to look like, up he's Dude. scared <laughs> like, Dude, like he's so quick and he's not so old but he's old and he's so quick it's like holy shit he's a beast i would not fuck with that guy <laughs> what are you, he's 54 he's 54 yeah he was, damn. He was born in 66 okay it's a beast holy shit hey man he looks good in a beard too that gray beard yeah. he's got going on he looks yeah, he's aging well, well. Little little pepper. Money will do that. I like that shit. Money will do that. <laughs> yeah. Also, Money I heard having he absolutely like zero cares. Fucking ten tons of pot a month or something. He was talking about. Dude, <laughs> I was like, like, what? He's crazy. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's got his own like farm and shit. Tyson Weed. Yeah. Tyson yeah, he has like this retreat or something. He was. I seen something about it on Joe Rogan or something like that. I think that's what yeah. I, where I seen it. Yeah, he was talking about his farm that he was getting going. I was like, this guy's nuts. He's a boxer, pot tycoon. Aficionado. <laughs> yeah. Dude, he's like, living the dream, man. He's living the dream. He's going to go fight again. Probably make like $40 million for one fight. I, I'm going to watch his fight for sure. Like, oh, yeah, shit. dude. Oh, my God. You watching I'm watching, the, I'm watching the training video. He is quick as shit. Dude. You see, oh, my God. Yeah. Holy fuck. Yeah, he's an animal. I would not fuck with that guy. And you know, he didn't like really lift weights at all either. Like it, towards the end of his, I, I guess probably he's lifting weights now. But like before that, like whenever he set all those um, early career goals and everything, and just destroying people, he wasn't lifting weights at all. He was just boxing his ass off. I think he was doing like push-ups and sit-ups and shit, and just running. Yeah, that'll do it. Push-up, sit-ups. You're pretty, yeah. pretty in shape, man. Can you imagine how? I mean, he was jacked. And, oh, God, Dude, I'm gonna see this fight. This is gonna be spry. Great. He is very spry for 54. That's incredible. I hope I'm in that good of shape when I'm 54. <laughs> I'm not in that right. good of shape now, shape but like now. you know, <laughs> I just need that. I just need that Neuralink to get me started. Man, yeah. that's, that's what you're gonna do. <laughs> Damn, yeah, can you imagine that though? Jed gets I mean, lane, dude, you would two not. months later he's jacked. <laughs> dude, <laughs> like, you wouldn't need college. I mean, and what you need? There's like, an argument. Schooling would you download? There's an argument to be made that you don't need college now. 
like there's an argument to be made that like you can look up pretty much whatever you want to specialize in yeah you can do it online like okay yeah. there's some things that are trade that that's a little different and mm -hmm. i love that i love that you have to go there and get hands-on because people learn hands-on and those are usually the people that do trades mm -hmm. there's something to be said about getting a college degree and like why you can easily learn online like easily yeah mm -hmm. like the idea but, of going to college anymore it, it's it's so outdated it's such an outdated form of education if right? you think about it like well, if i want to learn okay. about anything and i'm actually interested in it which after high school if you want to learn about anything and you're actually interested in it that typically is like what you should be doing like you shouldn't be going to college for something you're not interested in mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's another thing about college is like you got to go through all these like you got to get your gen gen eds out of the way you got to get your general education it's like no motherfucker i'm paying you to teach me about a a certain specialized job that i want to get into like finance or something like why am i learning about history when i need to be learning about finance like i get it if it's history of the history of finance but <laughs> why do my why do i need to to keep paying you money which the rates are ridiculous, by the way. Yeah. Why do I need to keep paying you money for shit that I'm not gonna fucking use? Like, yeah. So that's my beef with college. Like, like, I don't know, Mark. Did you go to a state school? No, I I just went to a um. What do you state? Uh, what do you call those? Uh, junior college, like uh, community college. Yeah. Okay. And I and I did a program where. Everything was like all my gen eds were like built around my. Ah, uh, okay, good. Uh, I like that. Classes, yeah. Yeah, like so, your function, your main major. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, so like I needed a math, but doing, uh, like I'm gonna I'm gonna get math in my other classes anyways, but, uh, so I would take um, what's the, accounting? Yeah, because I need to know accounting to run a funeral home, blah blah blah. So, yeah. Things like that. Uh, some things I didn't like. I took them and I was like, I definitely don't need this. Like speech, I didn't need that. I mean, maybe somebody did because you do have to conduct yourself in front of people, and it's like it's almost like conducting an orchestra because you're going to be talking a little bit, but you bring up other people and you you shuffle and move things around and you know things like that. So speech, I thought, was kind of a, a dumb thing to have us like as a requirement. But then, I don't know, yeah. Mark. After after watching you right now, I think you could have used a speech class. Yeah, Maybe yeah, a couple more. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just fuck with you, dude. Shit. Yeah. Uh, so well, uh, yeah, <laughs> it was it was a little bit different for me because like I went to a liberal arts school, and they kind of emphasized the fact of like you're gonna have more gen eds, kind of, because they want you to be kind of more diversely based. So like I had to take two religion classes, um, two uh, which I could pick any religion classes I wanted. Like I had to do the intro in religion class, of course, the intro one was basic. But then the second one could be anything I wanted, and I went with um, Christian, like someone with Christianity and Nazism, and that was interesting. It was a really interesting class, like what we kind of got into about that. Learned a lot about like the Holocaust. It was it was really interesting. It was years ago though, so I can't remember much of it. Um, but then we had to take two Western heritage classes, which is kind of like you know teaches you about the move of Western civilization across the you know the globe and all that kind of stuff. And that was kind of cool because you know it just gives you a bit more of like a base grounding to like um, you know popular culture, you know Western ideals, you know a little bit of philosophy, a little bit of like popular literature, you know like. So I kind of get it because it makes you more like a citizen of the world than of like you grew up in rural Illinois and you only know agriculture and, you know, that <laughs> basically. So I kind of oh, liked it. If you're it. going for ag, then that's what you'd know. You'd know yeah. ag. That's what we were saying. Like if you were just going for ag, then you would only know ag if you were growing up there. But 
what we thought would be better. I think this is what Lane was saying is like, okay, so your liberal arts school, I'm not going to talk shit on it or anything, but I'm saying like, they want you to know more. Like you were saying, you're a citizen of the world, right? But if you're going for like to be a doctor, do you really know you need to know all these other things, I guess is what we were, we were trying to get at. Yeah. And so it's like a doctor, like you really want to, focus on that because that's a lot of stuff you need to know so like crowding your brain with you know the politics in china 300 years ago does it really matter i see where you're coming from yeah mm-hmm. but yeah, i think that anymore. it's it's a good option to have for those that want it listen jed what i'm saying is anymore with today's technology i've noticed that people they're like oh you don't have a college degree like you must not be a well-rounded person it's like no there's the internet if I want to learn about something, something interests me. And if you want to talk to me about something, and I, I can look it up online, right? I can look up things online before we even get into a conversation, right? I've never met you before, right? I can look up things online on my own time that I'm interested in. I run into you on the street. You just so happen to have a college degree. I don't. We can sit and talk about things. And the minute I bring up I don't have a college degree, They'll be like, oh, well, then, like, like, what are you doing? Like, you don't know. You, do you really know what you're saying right now? That's, like, still going on today. It's like, yeah, why do I need bullshit. a college degree to say that I know about this or that? I know the smartest motherfuckers that can, like, sit and talk to me for hours on end about anything and everything, and they don't have a college degree. It's yeah. like... To think that you need one today in, in today's day and age, it's ridiculous. Like, focus yeah. on a specific thing. Like, right now I'm doing real estate. I don't need a college degree to do real estate. I just need a required amount of hours, and it's all focused on uh, that trade, real estate. It's like, I don't need to go to college to do real estate. Mm-hmm. Because most of it, like, I'm not going to get into that, but, like, most I, of it I, is pretty simple. Like, there's a lot that, like, the legal aspects and stuff like that, like, it goes yeah. pretty in-depth. There's a lot, actually, that you got to be knowledgeable about, but, like... With good reason. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I'm not focusing on the... the um, there's a little history in, involved in my studying right now. There's a little stuff like that, but it's it's all around real estate. It's not... It's, it doesn't go back to like, oh, back in – we got to learn about uh, the Civil War. It's like, why the fuck do I want to learn about the Civil War? I'm trying to study real estate. It's like there's none of that. Yeah. And that's what I love right now about it. It's like perfect. That's what I like. I think, uh, I think more schools are kind of going to that though too. Yeah. Like, uh, especially for online sure. ones. Like Phoenix University, I think they're definitely more like less gen eds, more like this is what you need to know for what you want to do. I think more schools are yeah. going toward that because they're, they see the trend. Um, but yeah, I see, where you, I see where you're coming from. Especially since people want to, especially since people want to have their education more geared towards something uh, like, like, uh, I had like Lane's doing now. I, I think since you're spending all this money and you want to become a doctor, you want all your gen eds also geared towards your doctor degree kind of thing. I think that's the trend right now. That's what I've seen a little bit of. I could be way off base and I have seen some sort of hyperbolic kind of area. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure it's uh, that way, especially for doctors. It's like you don't have time to fuck around with nonsense. If you're a doctor, you can't – like I feel like if you're going to school to be a doctor, you cannot be focusing and wasting your time. Taking your time away from studying real shit to go study about uh, – electronics in today's society or some shit like that like 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 okay i get studying like electronics in your field like certain machines how to operate those machines like for you know people or whatever but like yeah like shit like that stuff like 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 you know what i mean it's like yeah i'm sure that's how it is i don't know i don't my uh my wife's uh aunt is basically she has her doctorates uh, she's a nurse and she's like still going to school. Like she's got so many fucking degrees. She's still going to school. 
and like she's basically a doctor like she basically <laughs> is a doctor and she the shit that she has to like do and write papers on and stuff it's like damn dude why mm. it's such a waste also crazy. i don't know uh, yeah people go when they get their doctorate and by the time they're done with that they're like what late 20s uh early 30s uh, and they have no work experience at all yeah or they've only worked at the university or some some craziness like that and and you, you i can't employ somebody like that uh, personally i mean if they're a doctor that's a different story but yeah. if it's like uh i'm looking for somebody in a uh marketing position they have their doctorate in marketing i don't know yeah you don't have any experience like you yeah. i want somebody with experience and you're not seeing a lot of that like you see like all these people that should have good job experience they're like in their late 20s they should have worked you know something and had hard times good times you get through it and that really grows somebody i think if they work a hard job or they work any sort of job really and mm -hmm. they they have to be there they have to do the grind i think that really is I guess that stands out to me more than somebody that has, you know, just a whole bunch of degrees, a whole bunch of licenses. Yeah. That's like One thing that uh, my computer science t teacher told me was that when he was looking for, like when his son who graduated like from Carthage College a few years before I got there, when he was looking for jobs in the computer science field, because that's naturally what he went into with his father who was like, you know, killing it in Silicon Valley before he retired to become a teacher. Um, that he found a job that was in base, base programming language, not base. It was like a, it was like a newer programming language. It had only been out for like three years, but the job required eight years of experience with that program. And it's like physically impossible. Like you're like whoever's making this application up and like putting the requirements down just doesn't care. They just want like tons of experience, but also the degree. And it's like, this yeah. is, is this entry level or is this, you know, a journeyman level application? Like entry level means no experience, you know, maybe a degree, but no experience, but like too many jobs are like, yeah, sorry, you need six years of experience and on the job training that we're not going to give you. And it's like, oh, what, how am I supposed to get a fucking job? Yeah. Well, I mean, you're supposed to like, I feel like if you put on your application and this is what I've been doing, I've been reaching out to people like, uh, real estate, um, like brokers and I'm like, Hey, let me shadow you. Let me just. Tag along. I'll be a fly on the wall. You won't even see me. And I've been giving them my information like, hey, hey, I'm over here. Yo. So that way, like, I can get my foot in the door. I can actually, like, participate. I can say I've, like, no, I actually haven't been employed yet, but I've I've uh, viewed this guy, this guy, this girl, you know, shit like that. Like, you kind of have to market yourself. You kind of have to put yourself yeah. out there and try to, like, you, you kind of have to be, like, I'm willing to not get paid to basically accept uh, them on your resume or something. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. you could at least put them down as a reference and they could be like, oh yeah, dude, this guy was taking notes. This guy was doing his shit. You know, he was on ball. He was on board. Uh, you know, he seems competent or whatever, you know? Yeah. That's um, one thing like that... Like uh, internship is for like college internship. kids. Yeah. Yeah. So like um, with Amazon, right? I, I've always like, from day one, I was like, I need you to train me on everything possible so that anytime you guys need something, you can call me and I'll be trained to do it. Um, mm -hmm. And that's always been like my motto with Amazon because I know that it's a company where you can really grow. Not that it's like my end goal. Like I actually want to be an actor and you know, that be my main source of income. But right now Amazon's paying pretty well and I'm going to follow it until I don't need to follow it anymore. Mm -hmm. But like, I've always talked to my managers and been like, hey, I'm always, you know, ready to go for like any kind of training you want, any kind of like um, shadowing I can do, any kind of like just following you around for a day, even if I have to come in on like an off day and just like see how you do your job and, you know, sit with you on a phone call to see like how that kind of goes. And they've been like, yeah, you know, we're about to move to a new building after after Prime Week next month. And it's going to be a huge new experience for all of us because it's an FC instead of a sort center. And uh, they're already talking about, like, we might have to go to a whole different building and just, like, take care of their whole department. And I'm like, 
that sounds awesome because that's like 10 hours of just on the job training for the next level up job yeah man i'm sure that like you could you could get up there with amazon jed like i know people that have gotten like they make bank at walmart dude i know people that have been there for a long time and they're like pretty high management like level Mm -hmm. employees and they get pretty good money my my biggest failure with amazon is that i worked there for like three years and then i needed to take off time for my senior finals and my thesis and stuff and it was like you know when it gets to the holiday season they're really bad about letting people take time off especially when you're in like a department that like really needs people because it doesn't have that many so i ended up had to quit um november 2018 to like, you know, do my finals and start writing my thesis and stuff. So then when I came back, yeah, I worked in Amazon for over three years, but they should go by my last hire date, which was July, 2019. So on one side of the fence, I'm like a new employee with like very little experience. But on the other hand, it's like, I've, I've been in the Amazon culture for like so long. I know how, I know how we operate. I know what, what's important to us. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so it just comes down to like that has to come through in the interviews that I do is like I have to show them that I know what it is to be an Amazonian because they're really. So you're like, oh, my God, an Amazonian. No, I'm serious. So you're like, <laughs> is I'm that serious. what you guys call yourselves? Yep, Amazonians. You guys fucking really? meet every day like, what's up, brother of the fucking Amazon? Well, no, we're we don't. Here. We don't. We don't do fucking, the, the. We're Amazonians. Yeah. No, fucking Amazonians can't fuck with no, us. but they they do try to have a, a strong community. Like we'll do like uh, group days, and uh, especially like I don't know much more about the floor because I haven't been on the floor in almost a year and a half now. But like my team, the Tom team, because it's only like twenty five of us total on front half and back half, and night and days. Like that's it. It's like twenty five total for like a whole department. So like we will like all get together at like a bar. And the managers will like buy us food and and then we'll just, you know, sit around and have drinks for the rest of the night and just hang out, like just, you know, the people you work with. And the last time we did that was like right before the virus outbreak. And that was really cool. But it's, you know, it's so just nice to like, like the... Uh, oh, I'm sorry. So you guys, it's basically like a work meeting. You go over like pros and cons of the quarter no. or something and then they just uh, have food together. Oh, no, no, they're just, they're just, they're just like, up. hey, it's okay. like, hey, you know. You guys been doing a lot of good work. We're gonna we're gonna treat you to you know Rons or or something like that. We're, we're just gonna go out. Go to Rons. No, it's Let's see you at Rons, they, bro. They have really good food and they have like huge Long Island iced teas that are delicious mm. but dangerous. You sold me. Yeah, I'll right. see you gotta at come, Rons, bro. <laughs> gotta come to Wisconsin, boy. Yeah, dude. I think it was like uh, going out to the Hop In. We'd be like, all right, it's the weekend. Let's go to the Hop In. The Hop In's like an IPA bar. And then we go to like the snug, which was like a like an Irish. It was tiny, that's why they called it the snug. But it was oh. like a it was like an Irish kind of pub. That, I don't know if they had food. I think they did, but it was like an Irish pub place. And then they had the um the harp, which was also an Irish pub. And like we would just fucking go there and get blitzed. And then like we'd go to my buddy uh Bergie and uh Davies right after, and we just fucking get a pizza or something and we just fucking keep drinking watch a game just hang out oh boys it's just i gotta tell you the boys <laughs> i gotta tell you guys about um so in japan there's like there's a couple different holidays that uh just like groups of people get together but you definitely will do these with your company or like companies get together with other companies and they have like all their employees and they recognize like your achievements of what you've been doing or they talk about like uh just like let's have a good year next year or like this quarter yeah. good. that yeah. kind of thing and then they definitely they go oh, above and beyond to like do these team building exercises and then like i knew they were doing a whole bunch of escape rooms uh a buddy of mine was doing with his company and stuff like that i was like oh my god that sounds some of them sounded fun but then whenever they they were like yeah we had to do a whole bunch of math it was all i was like you lost me. 
okay. yeah, <laughs> yeah, we did that. Was it. Trigonometry to figure out how we're gonna fit the square inside the triangle, and <laughs> well, we had a, a hell of a good time. You missed it, Mark. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, shucks. Oh, shucks. oh no, man, that's a big shame. Um, so we we didn't have our uh, our summer barbecue we usually do uh, this year, but. Hopefully, if all this COVID's done, then we're going to have one in the winter, which they have like end of the year, and then they have beginning of the year. So they're right next to each other. And it's literally eat like as much food as possible, like big steaks. I remember oh, they, yeah. they were like, hey, yeah, get that, get that, like, uh, be like a whole fucking roast. They were like, get the whole roast and just eat that. It's like, huh, okay, I guess. Jesus and then you're just Christ. drinking beers until you're. Oh, you ever get that where you like, okay, I drink like 12 beers and then I go to the bathroom and then like everyone after that, you have to go to the bathroom again, <laughs> again, they're bringing them out in like the liter of beer. Oh God. Oh dude. Awful. I haven't had <laughs> like a good, good time. That's what that awful. is. <laughs> awful. I haven't had a good beer <laughs> night for a while. Cause like the friends that I drink with, they always want to go like super far down into Kenosha, <sighs> like almost down to the border to drink at a bar. And I'm like. I got to I got to drive like 40 minutes back to my house. I cannot get drunk at this bar. <laughs> you can get a little yeah, buzz, exactly. dude. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah I can get a little, little buzz, buzz, but you know, Take that's the thing the is road. like once you're a little bit buzzed, how much how much more can you drink before you can't drive home? Dude, mm-hmm. uh, for a uh, while I could not I knew my limit, but I didn't give a fuck. Like I'd hit my limit, I'd be like, "Yeah, yeah, I'm fucking fine. I could I could literally just be at this level the whole rest of the night and I'm fine." But then, like, shit just gets more exciting. And you're just like, ah! <laughs> right. and you just get fucked up, dude. It just almost almost like muscle memory kicks in where you're just like, yep, you yeah. just do this. Definitely. And I always like just... that point when you just stop tasting the beer. Yeah. Oh, it's Jesus. like, it's just water. That's why I go, that's oh, why I go dark beer. Another one. It takes a long time to get to. You go dark beer, right? No, I go, I usually go light beer, like a Pilsner. If I'm like really, like I'll I'll usually go dark beer if I'm having like a you know a good cheeseburger at like a restaurant, or like a steak. I'll go for like a nice dark beer with my meal. If I can't I'm going do Guinness. Drink, oh, I love Guinness. Oof, nothing yeah. better than Guinness when Fucking you go for disgusting. dark beer. But like yeah, if I'm going to drink, if I go to drink, I'm going to go with like a, a pilsner, uh, a pale ale, you know, some something I can get a lot of. <laughs> yeah, I get you. Uh, yeah, I mean. Dark beer is hard to find here in Japan. Usually it's Guinness, some sort of import. Uh, they make very few dark beers here in Japan because all of the uh, all the beers are like lighter and they're supposed to be enjoyed with food and you're supposed to like pretty much drink it excessively. It seems like uh, like if you go to like a Japanese style uh, bar, it's called an izakaya. Oh, there's sake. Yeah, sake. Is sake. Like- <laughs> no sake is like uh like something you sip on like if you like like a whiskey you know you sip on it yeah but it's just something it's shot wine. shots <laughs> Ugh. no way <laughs> um you guys have like acai out there right uh yeah uh, I know we see that a lot at like the the like the japanese import that's, stores that's, here it's a big one yeah that's a really big one there's like uh I guess if uh, if I go like my favorite, I'll just give the list of like the big ones too. Uh, well, Orion beer, that's like here on the island, that's that's number one. That's my number one. That's like mm, perfect. And then mm-hmm. and now they got bought out by Asahi actually, so they coming up with a whole bunch of new beers and new lines of stuff. I'm like yes, this is amazing. Um, and they kept all the old stuff, so perfect. So there's Orion number one. For me, uh, but then like everybody else will be Asahi, um, Sapporo. Uh, Sapporo is really really good actually too. That's up by it's like from northern Japan and it's it's just it's a really good beer. It's really light and it's meant to like be eaten. I mean, drinking with like a lot of food because it's for like uh, really hot dishes and stuff. So you drink okay. cold beer. Yeah. And then Kidding would probably be the last on the list. And Kidding is cheap it's like i think of it like the coors of japanese beers for sure yeah. 
I'm so like, cheap and it's like course, man. Um, dude, I'll I'm not a huge fan of course. I'm not a huge fan of course. I'll sign a course. I don't care. You, I mean, I'll I'll well, drink it. Like my first, my favorite course, beer is free beer. course. <laughs> I, I, my favorite beer is free beer. Don't get me wrong, but like I'm not gonna buy cores myself. But what's funny is like you like an open one. Yeah. Yep, <laughs> exactly. Honestly, but uh, what's funny is like around here, like a cold um, one. Because almost every gas station in Wisconsin has a beer cave. Like that's just like a you know Wisconsin standard. It's like even if it's a really small gas station, they probably have a beer cave. Nice. So like they usually have like tons of beer, but for some reason. If if any gas station has acai, they don't have the cans. They only have the little mini kegs. Plastic. Oh handle. yeah, I know what you're talking about. Fuck. Uh, like yeah, there we go. And they're like yeah. this big, you know, and you're just like carrying on this like little mini keg all night with just you know normal size mouth hole, like a like, nice like Starbucks frappe size mouth hole. And I, it's like, oh, yeah, they're like basically so nice. 40s. Too. Yeah, I think they're actually more than 40s. I think they're yeah. like 50 ounces. They were awesome. Nice. You get one, yeah, and you're fun. like, I'm, they're a good time. Yeah. I don't you just show to a party, and you're so like, much here. I'm just gonna have one, guys. I'm just gonna have yeah. one beer tonight. I feel like just everybody gets so excited. Like for me, whenever I get into like a a beer, like a walk in, like a beer cave, like just the, the cool fucking air, and it's like all the beer oh. you can get. It's just I get so excited. I'm like, yeah, dude, what can I have? Well, what am I gonna get? Ah. Right. <laughs> I get like a little it's like the new Whoa. version of a candy store, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, I'll like, spend I'll spend like 45 minutes in there just to be like, oh, look at all this beer, so much yeah. beer, it's all beer, yeah, everyone. This is extra bad. hops. Ooh, this one's malt liquor. Ooh, you know, this is just a snooping around. Yeah. For a while in Spain, all I had was uh, I'd get kegs and then I'd get uh, I'd get the um, Jägermeister and then uh, whew. Red Bull and Jägermeister. Hmm. I've always been more of a Monster and Jägermeister fan. Um, but that's just, just my preference. I just like Monster more than Red Bull. Whenever Jager I get shots, Monster. I would do. I would just do Jägermeister shots. Or have you guys? Uh, what's the name of that? It's like Jägermeister, Rumplemans, and oh so- no, it's- so it's. It's Jägermeister, Rumpelmann's, and Goldschlager, and it's called Liquid ah, Cocaine. Yes. Liquid and when cocaine. it's made right, it's What's delicious. What's it called, Jed? Liquid Cocaine. Mm. And I like think... when it's made right, it's delicious, and it'll fuck you up. But we had it one time at a bar, because it was like it's like our standard Amazonian shot, because we need it. Um, but we had it made at a bar one time, and they made them like this fucking big, and like those little plastic cups, and like... Ooh, it was it was terrible. It wasn't mixed right. It was <sighs> so gross. So <clears throat> down. You know what I think is fucking weird about Amazon? Like mm. eerie, kind of eerie. So if you look at like the Amazon in real life, like the jungle, like the fucking Amazon forest, yeah. it's got everything we need to survive. But then like this new Amazon, it's like they took a, they took that name and they're like, technically we have everything you need to survive. But I it's more it for the... material. Yeah. It's like, yeah. dude. And then, like, you just see every year, like, the Amazon rainforest just getting chopped down, chopped down more and more every year until one year it's just going to be Amazon.com, not the Amazon rainforest. I'm not yeah. so sure. I think there's enough people that are concerned about it. Jay, um, <laughs> it, it, obviously, that's not going to fucking happen. I'm just. I was making a yeah. point of interest. Okay. <laughs> so back to uh, back to consuming large amounts of alcohol. Do you guys want to hear something that my dad and his buddies used to do when he was growing up? Nope. Nope. Oh, okay. Fucking with you. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> no. I, it's a really good I story. No it's really really cool, man. It's really cool. Well, okay. If you tell if you tell a dad story, I'm gonna tell a dad story. Oh my god. And you have we're to all gonna story. laugh. I want to hear about Mark. Big Mark. All right, all right. So <laughs> when, we, when my dad's buddies and him used to do, they they take like 250 bucks, and they go buy some beater car, piece of shit, you know, something to get them around for the day. But after that, they can just junk it and not not be too concerned. And they'd they get this beater car. car. Yeah, they'd beat it. They'd buy some like beater car from a junkyard, and then they'd go to the uh, the gas station. Yeah, yeah. How often would <laughs> they do this? I'm sorry. 
I'm sorry. Yeah. I just gotta. Let's just. <laughs> I gotta stop real quick. So they would. They they'd just. You know, once or twice every. You know, well, every year they just. Hey, let's go get the. Let's go get the car. Let's go get the car. I think. I think they mostly did it like when somebody was gonna junk their own car. You know, when like somebody was just done with their car, they were getting a new one anyway. Or like if, when they just had enough money laying around, it's like let's let's you know pull our money, buy some piece of shit car. And what they did was they'd go to the gas station and they'd buy a keg, and a bunch of ice. And they would just fill the trunk with the ice and then put the keg in it. And then they'd just punch a hole in the back seat to run the tap through. And they'd just be cruising around, tap coming right through the back seat, filling up road beers, just driving around, drinking all day. Kegs in the back in the ice, just cruising, man. I'm like, wow, that's so fucking illegal, but sounds like an awesome time. The yeah, the chances of awesome. them getting pulled over with like a like a vehicle malfunction, like a no tail, like missing tail light or something, since it's like a two hundred and fifty dollar car, I wouldn't assume yeah. that the car is functioning properly. Oh, oh yeah, like yeah, man, this is this is sounds like a terrible idea. <laughs> yeah, but well, okay, we're also thinking nowadays though, you get pulled over with DUI, you're looking at you know maybe some jail time, right? Yeah. At the minimum. Yeah. For Back sure. then, it was like, what, you, you get taken to the drunk take, you sleep it off. As long as you don't sleep. hit somebody, you're fine. What, how, wait, how old was your dad? When was this? Um, let's see. He's He was born in 65, and he was probably doing this um, when he was like 15, 16. Okay, yeah. that makes way more sense because a $250 car, I was like. Oh, yeah. Like, I, and like, understand, <laughs> like, he wasn't spending like $250 on the car. He was spending whatever he didn't want. To, he didn't need for the keg and the ice on the car. Yeah, yeah. In the eighties, you know, and like eighty, right. eighty, eighty-two. So cheaper, cheaper price, yeah. cheaper for yeah. the for the keg, cheaper for everything. Everything. Yeah. 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 That's, uh, yeah. I don't know how people together. It, but... Anything's cheap, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, you get you get five buddies. Suddenly, two hundred fifty bucks is nothing. <laughs> exactly. Isn't that crazy? How like today in age, like like my uncle. Um, he was saying all the crazy shit he used to do. So my, my uncle, my, he's kind of my uncle, I guess. Anyways, it was like my grandpa's brother. So like yeah. my great uncle. Great uncle. His, his yeah. son, his son, because, well, my grandpa's brother owned a, my great uncle owned a uh, car dealership. And like, so my great uncle's son, uh, which we just called uncle, uh, he got he'd get like whatever fucking car he wanted basically and like back in the day um like the new car like the the hot shit was like the camaros and like everything like that and so like he got a what did he get he got a like a challenger or some shit like an old nice challenger and uh he he would say all the shit that he used to do in front of the cops in front of everybody and like the cops would just like do that they wouldn't wait their finger. like he'd he'd do burnouts in the roads at like a stoplight and then take off and the cop would be, and there'd be a cop right here and he'd drive by the cop and the cop would just be like and then maybe tell 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 his dad yeah yeah it's, it's well, that's fun. whenever they were they were protecting and serving not punishing and yeah I severing did i did i tell you guys that when i was back home for fourth of july we were up at uh, the Buda Bar, and like when bar clothes happened, everybody's just like chilling outside. And then all of a sudden, somebody just you know, throws a firework right down in the middle of the crossroads, and it was like a half stick of dynamite just blew up like two o'clock in the morning. It was <laughs> and loud. That one shit. dog barked, and that was it. <laughs> no, like I could hear my mom's. And then the one dog live. barked for six hours, <laughs> and the neighbors <laughs> got pissed off. <laughs> oh no! Um, like this was you heard it all across town, I'm sure, because it's so small. Like, oh, my yeah. mom came out of the house, like, because we're, like, right down the street from the bar. Um, We didn't, you know, because that's where the bar was, just because that's where the house was, okay? The house was there first. Anyway, <laughs> um, well, like, I, I'm just, like, walking back home, and I can see my mom just out on the sidewalk, like, what the fuck was that? Like, Lucian's barking, I can, I can hear him already halfway up the block, and I'm like, that was awesome, but, like, was it worth Shit. it? <laughs> but, you know, there's no there's no cop in Buda right now, so, you know, they, we got away with it. And then, oh, of course... Yeah. They actually threw two, and the first one didn't go off. And then, of course, Errol, being the idiot that he is, just, like, went over and picked it up. Because, you know, he doesn't care. <laughs> it was a catch of dynamite. Yeah, I'll just pick it up. No big deal. Whatever. Fine. Yeah. 
Buda Bar was like always, uh, I started going there. It's like towards the end of me staying around the area. And uh, I was like, yeah, the Buda Bar is where all the farmers and all the Buda kids are at now. And I'm like, it's a pretty cool drinking sesh. Just Dude, chilling out what? with some people I haven't seen in like 12 years. <laughs> what was it called when you were going there? Uh, I have no idea. Nobody ever really knows the name, right? It's always the Buda Bar, I thought. Right now? Right now it's Hootenannies. Yeah, it's it's just the Buda, Buda, Buda Bar. Bar. There's Buda no Bar, reason dude. to have a name on that Same thing. Same thing with, like, Wynet or Sheffield or... Well, Sheffield Reds, kind of. I mean, there's multiple yeah. bars there, I guess. You'd have to yeah. just think... Well, even Wynet has multiple bars, right? Like, yeah. three. I don't know. Or two. Yeah, right? like, Buda has and, the least bars. Isn't that crazy? Dude, like, the smallest towns... They have always like got a bar and then Casey's. <laughs> I mean, oh, Casey's heck, sure. we got like we got Langley, Illinois, and all it is is a bar. That's all. That's it. It's a bar, a restaurant, and a stage. Yeah, that's, that's great. That that's is awesome. And it's like a awesome. huge bar. Like I was there for Fourth of July. It was massive. It was packed. Psycho silo, bro. Crazy stuff. I haven't yeah. been there yet. I was gonna say you're. That was right after like you left by the time mm. that thing was a thing. Yeah, and now they're like, having concerts every other weekend in the summer. So, yeah, hey. it's crazy. They're cool, making a lot of money out there. Tons of money, hand over fist. Good for him. Yeah, great return on investment, hundred percent. And now everybody in the area thinks they need a motorcycle. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, you, duh, you need one. It's a biker bar. <laughs> yeah, everybody's got a bike now. I was like, was this was there this many before? Like, am I just seeing? I was like, no, there, there's no way. Everybody's yeah. just got a bike now. There's definitely got been a, an increase of bike ownership in like yeah. the four counties around Bureau. Of course. And Bureau, of course. Just need it. Because oh, it wasn't fun enough driving your car there and getting drunk and driving just home. Imagine you just all gotta the, uh, take the extra risk with the bike. Oh, yeah, yeah. Imagine oh, all the like husbands trying to convince their wives, like, hey, come on, I need a bike. This one. Look at this one, it's cheap. <laughs> They're like, we'll put a side no, car on it, I swear. Bike. Like Randy so, uh, of South Park or something. <laughs> Randy. <laughs> that's, true. that's why I imagined. He'd be like, babe. <laughs> Come babe. on, babe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, my dad used to be really wild, but like now he's like way toned down. Like he does not drink at all anymore. Like he'll have like a, you know, a glass of wine. If there's like some big event happening with the family, like, oh my God, I'm pregnant. Well, that's awesome. And he'll have like, like a glass of wine with people to like celebrate. But other than that, he like doesn't drink. But my brother has been doing like axe throwing out at silo and he's getting pretty good actually he's doing like tournaments and shit and like winning nice so my dad in an effort to like you know be more part of his life now that he has the time to he'll like go out to psycho silo on his little scooter the room room out there on his little scooter in his days of dukes and you no know, way. yeah and then he'll get there and he's awesome. like yeah, can i just get a cranberry juice can i just get a cranberry juice and pizza <laughs> and i'm like you know, just a cool, mouse you know? I could just imagine like this guy sitting. He's like all hunched over at the bar, and then he hears that shit, and the like big badass biker guy's like, "You want a nipple on that thing too?" <laughs> like, <laughs> just gets in a bar fight. <laughs> no shit though. Just, dude, like the thing was my dad though. Daisy Dukes on yeah. a scooter. Oh, I don't know if I could fight a guy in Daisy Dukes. Huh? Well, that's the thing though. It's like <laughs> dad exactly. knows everybody. Like everybody knows my dad because he's you know he's everywhere, always working on people's houses and shit. Mm-hmm. So like, they know who he is. Plus, he was running around a lot when he was younger, so people yep. know who he is. Mm-hmm. That's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. Did you see uh, California's proposed bill for, or they it passed, uh, for like basically pedophilia. What? Like they they passed a bill on. Yeah, it was uh, SB one forty five. And it it uh it lowered the age of basically the age of consent. So like it lowered the penalties for people that were like uh that were I guess accused of sexual like predator shit. Mm-hmm. Like so basically there's a ten there's a ten year gap for the ages, but the lowest age is fourteen. So basically a 14-year-old could have sex with a... T- I'm going to reword that. A 24-year-old could have sex with a 14-year-old, and it'd be fine. Because they lowered it to an age where 
it, it's a 10 year gap, but the max so, age is like 14 or I guess max or minimum. Yeah. Minimum max. age. Yeah. Right. I, yeah. I, I guess I, minimum age. So you're just saying be, people are going to go out and be okay. As long as it's only 10 years apart and they're the young like, one is at least yeah. 14. Yes. The, the, ah, yeah. mm. And the judge, like that's some they, sick shit, yeah. man. And in some cases, I guess it's going to be Awful, you know, like, case by case, like judge's discretion, discretion. But like, yeah, man, that's kind of weird. Mm, it's kind of fucked up. Because like, yeah, like think about it. That could be a teacher, like a young teacher. Yeah. A student or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, then again, like, weren't, weren't there a few teachers you were like, hey, what are you doing after school? Okay, Jed. Okay. Just saying, there was, there was a couple. Listen, there was Jed. a couple. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not going to get into that. I'm not going to get into that, Jed. You I know, know what I'm thinking about. You know what I'm talking about. But teachers never made me uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Miss Morris. I mean, what? No, <laughs> hey, hey, she was the best, okay? She showed us so many movies. She was the best. She yeah, let dude, us goof she off in class. Her. I remember she was filling in for like the whole. So Mrs. Henderson, our freshman year, was having her baby. Like two so months of classes, maternity leave. Yeah. So then Miss Morris came in, finished out the rest, like basically the rest of the year, and then towards the end, Miss Henderson came back. Well, that whole time, all we did was fuck around, did a little bit of assignments, and mostly yeah. watched movies. And she awful. came back pissed. Miss Henderson was like. What the fuck did you do? You didn't even teach them shit. Like, <laughs> I think just we did like two that. months of Miss Henderson's classwork in like the six months that she was gone. Yeah, <laughs> they, 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 they could not pass us because we did yeah. everything we were supposed to do, which was very little. We were like, yeah. this is like easy. <laughs> That's great. It was like, awesome. That's so. That's so. Fun. Yeah, and then senior year came around, around and like nobody signed up for AP English. So Miss Bechtold, who was teaching both English four and English four honors, was like, "Well, if no one wants to sign up for honors, I'll just turn the regular English four into honors." Yeah, I think we wrote like five, five, ten more papers than honors did, because we were all like, "We don't want to take honors because we have to write more." And she was like, "Well, if that's what you think, I'll change that." And then, <laughs> and then, so she she had like a she had so much tenure, right? That like she was like in, when she signed her contract the year after we graduated. She was like, if you guys make me like, like want to renegotiate my contract, I'm just going to quit. So they tried to do that the year after we graduated. And she's like, well, I'm good. I got my retirement settled. And then I was working at McDonald's and sure as shit, I saw her buying the big thing at Jack Daniels and like two, two liters of Coke, two nights in a row. And at I was McDonald's. like, damn, no, so at, Walmart. at Walmart. At I, Walmart. I why'd you have to Walmart. bring that in? <laughs> why'd you, where did the McDonald's so she, come she, in then? So, she partied it up. She partied she it up with her up. retirement. I thought she you were saying she came into McDonald's where you were working and she ordered a fucking Jack Daniels. I was like, Jed, they don't fucking have that there. What? <laughs> what kind of Walmart? I mean, what kind of McDonald's are you at? That sounds like a party yeah, and a half. Some of the man. address to that one, dude. <laughs> but no, like I would always, I would be at Walmart like almost every day after I got off at McDonald's, just buying stuff that I didn't actually need. And she was just getting slaughtered. Dude, two nights in a row. Two nights in a row. Right. I was like, wow. You know, she never, me uh, time. Just like uh, talking to her and stuff, she never struck me as a, as a Jack Daniels alcoholic kind of person. She just kind of seemed like somebody that read a lot of books and drink wine. Dude, Maybe she's, she's writing books. books. Yeah, Maybe she's, she was yeah, writing she's, books. She was just like... She's right? Right? Just fuck right? Oh, yeah. Well, you know writers, writers, they get fucked up and they write yeah, like crazy. Because like, they write uh, better. Like, maybe they write better. Stephen King, dude, when he wrote, he doesn't even exactly. remember writing. Uh, Cujo? It, I think. I forget what it was. It was a scary fucking movie. Or it was a scary fucking book. But it, like, obviously, it's Stephen King. But like, it was like a well known. And he doesn't even remember writing it. Typing. I want to say, say it was Ghostwriting. Ghost Hold on, yeah. let me Google this. Ghost, ghost writing before ghost writing was a thing. That's what it was. Ghost rider in the sky. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm. Yeah. 
a lot of writers they just get fucked up man and just right away and then then they go over it the next day and they're like okay this part's garbage this is good like just another way to unlock their create creativity or whatever wow he uh there's a lot of books he wrote that he doesn't remember <laughs> well oh yeah. shit once you write one book without knowing it, you can just write a bunch of books without knowing it. Exactly. The Shining. I think it was The Shining. Nice. I still nice. need to watch The Shining or read The Shining or both. Have you read it? It's just no. It's just one of those things. It's like you know, It'll I've never gone out there. of my way. Like, no, like I've never gone out of my way to do it, so it just hasn't gotten done yet. You know, like if it popped okay. up when I was like scrolling through Netflix to find something to watch, and I was like, hey, you know, I've watched The Shining, and there it is. I'll watch it. It just hasn't, you know, been there when I was looking for something to watch. Oh, Jesus. Eh. And one day, one day I'll watch The Shining when it's the right time, I guess. Eh. It's not overly mm. special, but it's it's okay. It, I mean, it's better than okay. That's it's, what I'll say. It's better than okay, but it's not yeah. outstanding. I mean, I didn't watch Top Gun until Johnny. I was like a sophomore in high school. I mean, not college. Oh, Top Gun's great though. Right, I still want to see the new one too. I haven't watched it yet either. Was he crazy Top Gun. before before Top no, Gun, I, or was he crazy afterwards? Who? Or has he always been Scientologist? Who? Uh, Tom Cruise. Oh, sh- I don't know. All I know is he's. I know he's into stuff. that. It's like Scientology shit. Forever. Like five, yeah, six, it seems something. like. Uh, well, Top Gun was uh, part of it was filmed here in Okinawa, so everybody knows the movie Top Gun here in Okinawa. <laughs> ah, Top Gun. <laughs> There's like ah, some Tom steakhouse yeah, that Liberty. has Goose. Tom Cruise's picture and signature in it and everything. <laughs> and it's like a big deal to go to that steakhouse. So he, uh, the latest movie, I guess he actually, was he allowed to fly legit? Like he has his pilot's license, but was he actually flying? Because I heard, I read somewhere that he actually flew. I don't it know. But like, movie. I, I, I think he's. He's not flying jets, and that's yeah, what no. the movie's about, right? Right, but he he flew like a like a something that looked like the cockpit of a jet. Hold on, let me. Yeah, like they can make like a private plane look like a jet, which is like you know body mods and and stuff like that. I could see that. Yeah, that would be pretty because, cool. Because you know, for cockpit footage, you don't need to actually <clears throat> be going Mach three. You just need to be moving fast. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. Of course. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. So the new Top Gun, Top Gun Two, he actually did fly. Yes, absolutely, he does, and that's why the star and some of his castmates have done for Top Gun, Maverick, the highly anticipated sequel that arrives 34 years after the original. Wow. 34 years? That's a big gap. Wow. And yeah. he still looks young, as fuck. You know, who actually, else there's looks a young? Uh, there's a conspiracy about that with the Adrenochrome. Um, it's all that Scientology. You know, you know it's who else looks young. really young for her age? <laughs> Jennifer Aniston. Dude, he flew his own jet. What the fuck? What? Isn't that crazy? He flew his I own jet. Rich enough that's to own his, a that's jet. That's his own jet. That's cool. That yeah. makes it even better. Yeah. To like just know that little bit about it. That's cool, man. Yeah. Now I gotta watch it. Yeah. That that sounds. Uh, yeah. I haven't seen anything about it, but um. Totally want to watch it. I saw the trailers now. when it was like first coming out. I was like, that looks cool. Mav- Top Gun was really cool. So I'm sure the second one with like <laughs> way better CGI. But he's still, a, he's uh, he's still like crazy. a captain or something in the latest one. It's like, dude, it's been 34 years. You're still a captain? Why don't you rank up, like, dude? <laughs> I feel like you're like, <laughs> <fought> <laughs> out. <laughs> I think from the trailers, it kind of like made it seem like he left and they're like, hey, we need somebody to train these new guys how to fly. You want to come back? He's always like, like I guess. There's always that fucking movie where, like, the guy's out in the wilderness, he grew, like, a beard, and then, like, some government black van pulls up, they, like, knock on the door, and they're like, hey, we need you back. You're the best of the best. And then, like, the, the guy's just, like, you know, hatching, fixing a fire in his rotten old cabin or something. He's like, those days are behind me now, or some crazy thing. Yeah. <laughs> like, Have so you guys I seen told you I'd never that. do that again. Yeah. <laughs> I promise that. You guys I seen promise the Keenan Kale sketch wife. about that? I promise my dad. Right, whenever wife, you I get out, they just pull you back in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's what it is, dude. I think that Stallone started that, right? Yeah. With, uh, yeah, with uh, 
the where his his daughter got kidnapped or something or I no, no. the movie. That's uh, I think you, Stallone and um. What what made Stallone huge? Uh, Rambo. Well, Rambo. <laughs> God, Rambo. Rambo. That's Rambo. what I've been thinking of. Yeah. Nah, it wasn't Rambo. A million of those movies. Those it was Rambo. Like? Rambo got out. He was he was fresh out from the from from Nam, and they were giving him shit. That's kind of different, because yeah. like he 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 had just gotten out. He wasn't like out for a long time. Well, but no. It, okay, so the first one the first is one? First Blood, right? Yeah, First Blood. Rambo, First Blood, and yeah. he he gets out, and then something happens, and he's he's running from the government. He doesn't actually kill anybody at all in Rambo, First Blood. Uh, but then the second one, he gets like arrested, and he's in prison, he kills people. and then he kills people in in the no, first First Blood. No. Fuck yeah, he does in the in the woods when he's hunting all the cops or when the cops are chasing him through the woods with the canines. Kills the dogs. He kills the fucking um. He kills the helicopter pilot because he fucking threw the rock at him. He kills uh. Okay, dude, he, one kill. One no, kill. No, 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 dude. I'm telling you, he I'm, killed. He killed uh, that guy. He killed the the dudes that were chasing him through the woods. All the deputies and shit. And he spared. He spared. What's his face? Um, fucking uh, the main sheriff. He spared him, the guy that picked him up originally and was, like, giving him shit. He spared him. He was like, this is the end. And he's like, this is enough. That's it. Don't fuck with me. Like, do not fuck with me. I'm showing you what I'm capable of. Don't fuck with me. And he still pushed it. And then that's that's it. That's basically it. I'm well, telling and you. Then, and then the second one, he kills a whole mess of fucking people. But, yeah, he's, like, in prison or something. They come and get him. Like, we'll let you out if you go to Nam and like in the 80s or something, and uh, get all these POWs or something like that. And he's like, okay. <laughs> We're sending you behind enemy lines to recover our prisoners of war. You up for the challenge, oh, old man? <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. Wing and, me and in the a shoulder. whole bunch of that craziness, out. right? All throughout all the Rambo movies, it's all like, go fight whoever America's not friends with right now. And then the last one is he, like, fights the cartel. Right. Yeah, uh, we just talk about uh, I want to talk about like Expendables. Like that was literally just a bunch of like action movie stars being like, you know what, we're getting kind of old. Let's just make movies where we just be badass and kill a bunch of people and there's a lot of explosions and just just have fun with it. And that's what they did. And they made like three of them. And that's all it is. It's Home just front. them like. That's just they're that's just like movie. you know redoing their old lines, doing the same old action stuff. Yeah, so it was you know they were what they were. They were kind of toss away funny action movies of your old action movie stars being old. Nice. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Well, uh, sure. yeah, let's not talk about Rambo anymore. Well, for one, Rambo, huh? Well, for one, I got nothing I have against him, Rambo, but... so I can't really comment on it. Good. Yeah. Yeah. I should watch Rambo. <laughs> What's what's something that Jed's seen though? What do you think Jed's seen too many times? Dude, what the oh. hold on? Whoa, 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 Jed. What? You are a theater major. Yeah. And you haven't seen The Shining, Rambo. What's the other movie? <laughs> what are you talking about? Dude, what the fuck, Jed? You're fucking up. I've seen a lot when of you, other stuff. When you get. You've seen a lot of bullshit. You gotta watch good movies. When you get down here, I got a list of movies you you better have watched. Okay, <laughs> that's what we I'm gonna share. send you a list of movies. Yeah, tons you... of movies. Okay. Uh, what that's about? Oh, crazy. Got, Anyways, what what were you saying? My bad. I got well, like, fucked up movies. Maybe we gotta find we gotta find movies that Jed has has seen. Right? Well, how about this? Yeah. How about this? Uh, what do you what, think? What do you guys I bet he's seen. I bet he's seen Romeo plus Juliet more than a dozen times. No. Ah, oh, damn it. I was going with the Shakespearean shit. I thought he was going to totally yeah, see that. I'm not a big fan of the whole Romeo and Juliet thing. Like, it's a good story once, but, you know, it's it just kind of kind of like what it was based off of. It's stupid, you know? Yeah. Like, it's based off the War of the Roses, which was really stupid. You know, it's just <laughs> two families fighting for, for, for political power. You know, I'm just over politics. And then it comes... You know, then they portray that onto like little teenagers that kill themselves because they're so in love with each other and their families won't allow it. Like, there's other options. You know, you could just 
get the fuck out of there and make your own life in the woods somewhere on a farm, you know? You don't have to murder yourselves. So Dude. I'm not a huge fan of Romeo and Juliet. More of like a Hamlet, uh, Macbeth, King Lear, that kind of stuff. Dude, I don't get why they're still teaching. Like, they sh- like they're still teaching, like, Hamlet and fucking Romeo and Juliet and shit. It's like, we have it's movies relevant. nowadays that are the same shit that people can understand. Like, when I w- was reading that shit, I was like, how half that when the clock strikes the <laughs> when the moon goes down at a third crescent and her <laughs> her blouse is <laughs> yeah, red like... as the blood <laughs> it's like what the fuck dude can you just we've we've got movies nowadays where you can watch them you can you can get the same plot same narrative same good feel vibe probably a better vibe because you fucking understand it a little better and people that can you can be engaged in like like mob movies like it's yeah. like shit like that. Like you can totally do it, but like I will no, say, we're still stuck on like the past. It's like I will say as like on. someone who like spent a lot of time studying Shakespeare in like multiple classes, not like multiple classes dedicated to Shakespeare, but like multiple classes where we hit Shakespeare's different points. There's a different level once you do like to that point where you can understand what he's saying. Like in my voice for the stage class, where we just read sonnets and then did accents with them. We had to break down what that sonnet was actually about and like just there's a different level of understanding and there's a different appreciation for how uh, Billy Wigglestick was able to craft language in such a way (laughs) to like, you know, it's very obscure. No one actually really talks like that. Even then, they didn't really talk like that. But how he uses language is kind of nice. Could you imagine that? Could you imagine that shit back in the day? Like. Oh uh, how th- imagine, can you imagine what a, a press press conference would be like if we were all oh talking like that now oh my god the news uh, you know pray the, tell you me the... good sir what befalleth your beliefs on this political <laughs> fucking bullshit you know like the oh english people, the english people still wear like the shit on their head the wigs like, the wigs oh my god. the really? powdered wigs whatever they still do that to how, this day how much whenever they have yeah. a yeah, whenever they have like a thing, they wear, they put that shit on, dude. It's like, what the fuck are you? You might as well be talking about for gun laws, muskets or something. Like you might as well, if you're gonna dress like back in the day, you might as well fucking go live back in the day, dude. Well, come on, get with the day and age. Come on. What do you think's you're better? A developed though? country. What do you right? think's better, Boris Johnson's haircut or that wig? Because he has like Boris a Johnson Ford. Is. Isn't that the guy that looks like Trump? No, oh, no. It's like oh, their version it, of Trump. Maybe I'm misthinking of the name. It's like No, England. but yeah, it's the prime minister of uh, England right now. Isn't yeah. Boris Johnson? I, I His haircut so, yeah. looks like a 14-year-old's haircut. He looks like a Dude, little boy. It looks, it looks like all over the place, right? <laughs> it's it's Dude, ridiculous. They called on. him. They called him. So what's uh, better? Put that dude in a white wig or let him be? Hey, I, he's I, just got really, really light hair. You know, it's it doesn't have the structure it needs. I'm sure somebody's it, told him by now, like, hey. It looks fucking ridiculous. Doing? Yeah. <laughs> so, hey, can you fix your hair, sir? Like, please. <laughs> back on to like movies. Like, what are you guys' like number one go-to movie forever? Oh, best shit, movie you've ever seen. Shit. Fuck. That's okay, hard. we gotta do. We gotta do by <coughs> genre. By genre. So. No, fuck that. Fuck that. Best movie of all time. I can't give you... Best movie of all time? Okay, my favorite movie of all time. Shit. Uh... Yeah, Lane, what's your favorite movie of all time? Yeah, see? (laughs) Yeah, see, that's hard. If you don't know it in your head, like, I do have movies in my head I could say out right now, like Big Lebowski or uh, fucking Scarface or something. It has to be a genre-based film because, like, I can't go off of, what's your favorite movie of all time? It's like, it depends on what mood I'm in. I could... I could be in a pissed off mood and watch okay. The Pursuit of Happiness, which is a good movie or something. Not that okay. it's one of my favorites. But like and I'm gonna get this I'm gonna be like I'm not in the mood to watch this movie. But if so, I was in a sad mood, I'd wanna watch that movie. So you so have to what, give me a genre. So what movie now like no like what movie are you always in the mood for? Like no matter what mood you're in, somebody's like, Hey, you wanna watch this? You're like, fuck yeah. Every time. Hey, Goonies. No matter what. Goonies? Solid. Yeah, Solid. Love the- Goonies is pretty great. Sean Astin, a bunch of other people. 
<laughs> exactly. Uh, well, look, there's a lot of the so. yeah, there's a lot of people that are in that that like ended up being bigger stars later on. Yeah. What about you, Jed? <laughs> me? Um, two movies for me that like I never say no to: Iron Giant and um, oh god. Nice choice. Right, dude, so good. You are what you choose to be. And then he goes and like takes out that nuke. Mm, what a powerful thing. They teased the second one with the with the pieces coming back together, but they never made it, and I'm kind of upset about it, but whatever. And then the other one is um Wild America. But that one's got a lot of sentimental value because I always watched it with like at my grandma's house. But it's literally just these three brothers who's like their dad's like a trucker, and for extra money they like clean up carbs and stuff and sell those. Um, but like the youngest kid wants to be a pilot. The oldest wants to like travel the world, like Hemingway and shoot nature, not like shoot nature, but like, you know, with a camera and it's just like, you know, be a lot cooler if you shot nature with a gun. <laughs> so yeah, like the two older brothers are like, we're going to go on this road trip and we're just going to like document some of like the endangered species. But then of course the little brother sneaks into the car with them. They go find this car- this bear, this cave bear with like 30 bears. You know, it's crazy. It's a really good movie. Talks about like brotherhood, um, being true to your roots, you know, all kinds of good stuff. Really good, really good feel good movie. A lot of a lot of funny little action bits too. Nice. Hmm. Definitely check it if out. If I had to, uh, honestly, so a movie I'm down for any time would probably be, uh, fucking The Big Lebowski. But like, if I'm going by like. Thought-provoking, um, sci-fi, chilly, dark, mysterious. I would go with Donnie Darko. Uh, have you guys seen mm-hmm. Donnie Darko? No. Um, no, no I Jed, I'm add sorry. that to your list. It's got Jake Gyllenhaal. It was one of his first movies. It's also, okay. it's also got his sister. Uh, I think her name's Megan Gyllenhaal or whatever. But uh, something Gyllenhaal. Oh, wrong I guess. See if I'm going for like a funny comedy, <clears throat> like like feel good, like not nah, maybe not feel good, but like just a funny comedy. Maybe uh, super bad. Oh my god! <laughs> super bad. Uh, that uh, was that's that, that takes me back to whenever that came out. It was just. Fucking good time. Everybody dude, loved that movie. Whenever. Were you dancing dude, with a uh, girl in there? Dude, uh, <laughs> we, when me shit. and Logan watched that uh, together, and your dad got his first like camera phone, his first cell phone camera phone. Oh, yeah. We took it. We took it from him. And then you know the beginning scene where the the dude's like, "Oh man, I was just addicted to drawing dicks, just fucking big old dicks, everything." <laughs> well, we took a picture. We took. We took a picture. She didn't know how to operate a phone, your dad. So we took a picture of one of the dicks that the dude drew, like with like a, a super cape or some shit. And then we set it as his background, his yeah. wallpaper. Oh, no. And then we gave him his phone back and he could not figure out how to fucking change it for the life of me. He's like, what the fuck? He's like, get this shit off. He almost That's beat hilarious. our ass, dude. But, uh, He's fucking great. Uh, yeah, man. If I was trying to go for like a, a sad, emotional movie oh shit um where the red fern grows no old yeller no. pretty much anything okay. where a dog okay dies. that's my nostalgia movie mm. if there's a nostalgia movie it's old yeller for sure oh, for sure uh old if yeller. i come back yeller <laughs> best dog on dog in the west oh my god, Jen. god damn. you're bringing it back to me I'm bringing uh, it back. I'm going to think of the other ones, like a sad one, but what about you guys for, like, the other genres? Oh, um, action movie. What, what What do you like for action, though, Jed? Um, I got one. Um, but... Go ahead. You go with yours, and that'll give me a better idea of, like, what kind of action you're talking about. Oh, Die Hard. Greatest Die- oh. action movie of all time. That's, Die Hard is not an action movie. Die Hard is a Christmas movie. <laughs> well, sorry. I I stand corrected. <laughs> and Die Hard is my favorite Christmas movie. <laughs> come on down to come on down to LA. We'll have a few laughs. No. 
Okay. If we do that, then it, uh, shit. Damn. Well, okay, I, I guess I, is, okay, you go, you go. <laughs> oh, sh when it comes to action, action's so broad. I mean, action, there's a lot of good ones. I don't want to say Fast and Furious because they're really cheesy. Um, uh, fuck. Transformers is good, but that's also like, you know, kind of sci-fi. Uh, I really like war movies. So like, uh, Fury was really good with, um, oh God, what's his name? Quite a few. Fury? Shia LaBeouf? No, well, Shia, yeah. yeah, anyway, Shia LaBeouf I'm down for. Anything with did Shia you, LaBeouf. Did you hear about Shia LaBeouf and Fury? He, like, wouldn't bathe for days on yeah. end. Yeah. And everybody hated him for that. You got, he's a, he's a method actor. He gets in That's character. awesome. He's like he cutting his scared. face Brad Pitt. <laughs> during that shit. Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt. There we go. That's what I was thinking of. Brad Pitt. Um, what else is really good? Um, Hacksaw Ridge, another great recent war movie with um Andrew Garfield. He does a lot better in that than he does in Spider Man. Since that movie came out, there's a whole bunch of people that go to that area where that battle scene was. Mm -hmm. it, like it's a, it became like a big thing after that. Like, oh, Hacksaw, I'm here. Everybody, take a picture. Of course. Hmm. It wasn't a thing before that. Movie. Now. Yeah. I got my sad movie. Sad movie is Marley and Me. Like, every oh, time... I didn't... Mm. Dude, every time I uh, I watch it, like, it's a fun... It's a funny movie, but it... And then the it end happens. It builds you up to it. It builds you up to the, like... You're gonna cry, bitch. And every time... Every time it gets to that part, I'm like... It's fine, dude. It's fine. It's not gonna happen. It's fucking it's fine. Happen. You're not gonna cry, bitch. You're just... And don't then, fucking cry. And then... You do. And then... And then it... It hits when she fucking lays down her little toy or whatever. She's like, here you go, Marley. And I'm like, oh, my fucking heart, dude. <laughs> like, my heart. Uh, yeah. Um, Dang. One of my other favorite movies is The Princess Bride. But, like, uh, it doesn't even really fit in a genre. That's a good it's comedy. Funny. It's a comedy. It's an action. It's everything. It's romance. You know, it's everything. It's beautiful. Rom-com. <laughs> Rom-com with some action. <laughs> Rom-com action. Yeah, it's great, man. Uh, Andrew the Giant. Uh, um, that dude that just says inconceivable all the time. I just love him. He's hilarious. Oh, yeah. Did you guys know, actually, um, Indigo Montoya, the actor for Indigo Montoya, his dad was actually, like, battling cancer when they were filming. Like, right, right like when they first started filming. And he lost during filming. So, like, for him, like... Every time he was like, my name is Indigo Montoya. You killed my father. You prepared to die. He thought he was like facing cancer, you know? He like really channeled that. So I think mm -hmm. that's it's probably why he, it's such a good movie. Because it has that kind of like raw, like with acting, you know, anytime you can base your acting off of like a real visceral connection you have, it just puts it out of the, out of the world. It just makes it that much more real. You can like actually connect with the audience more. So like because he had that, that battle going on in his mind where he's like fighting cancer for his father and like getting over it. Um, it, it carries over to him, you know, fighting the, the six fingered man. Ah. Yeah. Shit, man. Action <laughs> movie. Uh, I'd probably have to say like predator or the Terminator uh, Arnold film for sure. Definitely. Uh, adventure movie. I'm thinking Lord of the Rings fellowship. Like if I'm Ooh, talking about really? like an adventure Adventure. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm going to go Lord of the Rings Twin Towers for that. I'm just going to go Lord of the Rings. Twin I Towers. mean, Lord of the Rings in general. Lord of the Rings. All of them. They're, it's amazing. Like, hands down, the best as far yeah, right as, like, there. whenever that genre of uh, uh, trilogies, yeah. Lord yeah. of the Rings takes the cake. Yeah. And, like, The Hobbit was super good, too. Yeah. It, it wasn't a bad film. At all, yeah. uh, uh, I, I didn't like that they used CGI. CGI. Yeah. yeah, because if you can tell the difference between a uh, model for a uh, model, the models that were used in um, Tolkien or uh, uh, Lord of the Rings, Lord of the yeah, Rings, the, yeah. the the first the Lord of the Rings, and yeah. then the, with the Hobbit, it was all all CGI, and that's exactly what not all of it the director wanted. Yes. All of it? A lot. Of, like, dude. I would definitely say more, but I think for like a lot of the close-ups, 
they, they probably still use like prosthetics and stuff. Yeah, but whenever you're talking about the orcs, like every single one of those orcs was yeah. like prosthetic up. Like no mm-hmm. CGI in the other ones though. And it looks yeah. so much better. It like you yep. actually yeah. get into the movie. Like it's experienced. You feel it more. With all that CGI, it takes you way out of it. I kinda see where you're coming from. It's just distracting. I don't necessarily agree, but I see where you're coming from. I think that like anytime a, a prosthetic's talking. And, like, the prosthetic's so thick that, like, it's not a natural mouth movement or, like, natural facial movement. I get taken out of it. So, like, that in that aspect, the CGI is a little bit better because they motion track the actor's face and then pull the points to where they would be on the, uh, like, the orc's face or whatever. And then it becomes more natural. Kind of like, like, a lot of people have problems with the Lion King because they put human emotional faces onto a cat. It's not exactly, it doesn't work like that, right? So that's why yeah. I like, like this looks so weird. Like this doesn't doesn't look right. But like when they do that with like a humanoid creature, it does look a little bit better. And I I like that personally better. So I don't mind the CGI as much. Oh. Mm. Okay, action though. I figured it out. Since it's not Die Hard, it's not a action movie, it's a Christmas movie. Then I'm gonna say uh Bruce Lee, Enter the Dragon. Mm. Do it. I am in that movie. Okay. Holy okay. shit, was that a Bruce badass Lee. movie? Alright, then I got one. Kung Pao. Fist of You're dumb. <laughs> You're fucking dumb, dude. <laughs> that fucking movie is so funny, dude. The that's the one with the baby, right? When it gets thrown down the hill and it's like And like just keeps rolling and then the woman stops yeah. like, Oh look a baby yeah. and then keeps she it rolling. Tosses. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Dude. Yeah, man. Oh lord. I Definitely didn't finish that movie, but <laughs> oh, I've watched that movie probably twenty times, and like six of them were back to back because we were doing an event where we were like, we have all this alcohol to drink, and to motivate us to drink it faster, we're going to watch Kung Pao on repeat until we're done. Oh my god, it was oh, hilarious. Lord. Toward the end, we actually turned it off after the sixth one. We turned it off and just put on uh, Chosen One. I'm coming, and it was like a ten hour loop of just the girl screaming Chosen One, and the guy being like, I'm coming from like. Super far away, and then a little bit closer, and then farther away again, and then even closer, and then farther mm. away, farther away. It's, Damn it! It's really funny. It's really funny, dude. Oh. Uh, what's, your, what's your go-to rom-com? Because mine's Fifty First Dates. I would say oh, either that Fifty was First a good Dates one. or Hitch. One of those two. Those are both really good. Yeah. yeah Fifty First Dates. You kind of like took that out. It's a good one, right? It is like, oh, she bumped uh, her head. She's kind of slow. I think she's got nice titties. Let's, let's a lot like, of, uh, get to that a point lot of, every day where I just like hold your hand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot of Adam Sandler's first movies were like really good, like Billy Madison. Um, uh, what was the other one? Wedding it's Singer. Not a rom com. I, I saw a rom com, but like I just you know an Adam Sandler movie like from his early days. How yeah, his it? early stuff was really good. I think. I think. Uh, He's only like had a couple flops where I'm like, Ugh. yeah. And they're usually his sequels. Jack and Jill. See. Yeah. I don't want to see him in Jack and Jill. <laughs> yeah. I, the Cobbler wasn't as bad as everybody said it was. Yeah, I liked the Cobbler. I thought that was a really good movie. It was kind of heartwarming, I guess. He's definitely you guys seen his sold you guys... out. Yeah. He sold out just about as bad. Sold as out every not goddamn as bad. movie theater there. Everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Sold no, out. Def- sold out. Like fucking not as bad as uh Sylvester Stallone and Spy Kids sold out, but sold hey, out. Hey. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> sold Whoa. out like <laughs> come on. Spy Kids know. 3 was amazing. You had some later little, movies like you had like, super uh, young Selena Gomez. Sylvester Stallone was the bad guy. George Clooney was the president. Antonio Banderas was the dad. Machete came back as the uncle. And then Steve Buscemi came in on a flying hog out of nowhere for no reason at all. I'm not saying Jeez. I don't like it. <laughs> it's like, it's a power-packed movie. It's just crazy. They definitely <laughs> over-budgeted. They definitely oh, yeah. went over-budget with that movie. But oh, yeah. anyways, yeah. Uh, I don't no know. His latest movies are just like... I don't uh, know, man. Have you yeah. guys seen Uncut Gems yet? It's not good. No, I haven't. I heard it's a whole bunch of... I needed a fucking uh, Xanax. Adam Sandler and his friends or something? Uh... It was trippy for me. I needed like, a Xanax. It was just like the mood that I was in. It was crazy. The ending threw me. 
you know, I was, he was like a wild ride. You know, he's struggling it the whole time. It wasn't that good, though. I, I, thought I the agree with everything really you're good. saying, but it's I was like, get to the fucking point. What was the point? Get to the fucking point. I'm sitting there going like, cool. Okay, the guy's like, he owes money to everybody. Cool. And then he just ends up dying at the end. I'm like, this was a waste of my fucking time. Spoiler, dude. Fucking spoiler. Yeah, but he won big. It's but not worth seeing it, Mark. Just saying. Not worth seeing it. Sorry, bud. It you is worth seeing it. it. It's a, it's an interesting experience. You'll enjoy it. Jed, you have fucking no taste then. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Get the fuck out. <laughs> uh, book me a flight to Germany. I gotta go beat a man. <laughs> Jesus. You couldn't beat a drum, Jed. Fuck. Actually, I'm pretty damn good on a drum. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hey, that's a good movie. That's a good comedy movie. Hot Rod. <laughs> with uh, with uh, Andy Samberg. Jed, don't even you don't give me the look like you've never seen it. You've seen that movie, haven't you? I don't think okay. so. Maybe. I don't think so. Yeah. Uh, Coming from a guy who says I like again, to party. A good movie. Doesn't <laughs> surprise me. Who says My name's Mark and I like to party. <laughs> well, you know, hey, you gotta remember. Your tastes and my tastes are very different. I know, Jed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I, the, the best scene, though, is whenever everybody's like, nobody does the party. I'm the only one that does the party in here. Yeah. <laughs> That's the best scene. Are, are they just having plow right into that bus? He's like, the ramp must have been off. He plows right into a bus. Because... I was not expecting that at all. Babe, it's just great. Babe. No, babe. No. Babe. That dude that hates FM radio. He's like, like he's got the chat too. He's like, yeah. I like to think that he had sexual intercourse the night before, and uh, one stream is going into the AM or FM radio. One is lying directly on a nice blanket covering the AM. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right, yeah, so we just got back from like, you know, a little little uh, bathroom break, you know, water retrieval break. Uh, Mark, anything interesting happened while you were uh, getting anything to drink or anything, you know, something weird? <laughs> yeah, uh, I just popped outside real quick to run to the vending machine, grabbing some milk tea. Um, and fucking, there's a, I mean, it's, uh, what time is it right now for me? So you can understand. Uh, 10 p.m. It's it's ten o'clock at night. It's pretty young into the night for Okinawan people. This dude's hammered drunk in the middle of the street, just pissing everywhere. <laughs> Got his dick whipped out in front of the cars and he's just pissing. The dude is gonna get the cops on him. I swear to God. I hope somebody goes and gets their man because that's fucking hilarious. Right. He's like he's he looks quite older, so he's probably in his eighties. <laughs> hey, maybe he needs a neural link. Keep that pee where it, where it's supposed to be in his bladder. Exactly. <laughs> um, Aim correctly. Don't stumble out to the streets. <laughs> right. Uh, hmm. Oh, so I don't know if we're gonna wrap up the movies, but before we do, we gotta talk about how fucking Lane Miller and my fucking brother were the the terrible duo of fucking movies. They they ruined this movie for me, Step Brothers. Because they loved it so fucking much that Deadly they quoted the movie mixture. in its entirety. In its entirety. It's good. Word for word. Quoted the entire movie. <laughs> sang, it's good. Sang the fucking Sweet Child of Mine part perfectly. Fucking. It. it was ridiculous. The movie wouldn't be. So they, they would have the movie on and then they would just quote it back and forth until they got it perfectly. Turn the movie off. And do it. Word for what timing was there. Fucking everything. They just quoted that whole movie. They acted out the scene where they golf club each other in the fucking head. Just everything. It was fucking hilarious to watch. But by time number six, it was a little... I was like, I can't watch this fucking movie anymore. Because all I see is Lane Miller's face and Logan Rowe's face on these fucking people. <laughs> fucking. We got a drum yeah. set. So, of course, that had to be part of the ball sack scene. Of course. Putting some nuts on a drum set. <laughs> Fuck okay, you, Dale. Fuck you. You do kind of make it. You make it sound like we studied. 
it, uh, that was well, not the case. We definitely didn't <laughs> study it. We just re- we just re- recalled it from watching it a million times, and then we yeah. just. So I haven't had a car since '04. <laughs> that uh, that reminds me of like, so like growing up, we'd only like really spend weekends with our dad, because like you know, mom lived in town. It was just easier to just you know stay with her and go to school. But on the weekends, we'd like hang out with my dad. We'd usually like you know make a pizza, you know, get a movie to watch. But there was two weekends in a row that we rented the same movie, and the movie was Without a Paddle. And we watched it like. 20 times a weekend just a good over adventure and over movie. again it's a good adventure movie good funny movie you know um you know uh has the okay. guy from the guy that played shaggy yeah. yeah oh yeah had matthew lillard uh seth green um dak shepherds the guy dude just those three guys dude yeah. hilarious combo the dude looked like the guy from nickelback chad kroger oh uh, yeah bit. i hope okay. you know what i hope he plays fucking in that and everybody wants wants that movie to come out you know what i'm talking about tiger king the movie i hope he's i hope he's playing the dude uh what's that guy's name uh, the gay the gay guy with the gun shit the main guy the tiger king yeah the main the the tiger king I, uh, you could say <laughs> i have not watched anything about tiger king at all yeah. you have not seen tiger king oh yeah it was, that was i heard a lot the of shiznit at the beginning of See what I mean, people? See what I mean? Jed is just fucking up it his is... acting career. He was cultured like... by school, and then he's just thrown it all away. <laughs> I just, you know, it just never was something that piqued my interest, you know? I, I feel like I've gotten the gist of everything that happens in it by, by seeing all the memes and, and rants about it. So I, I, what's left to watch? Have you been Wasn't to the zoo, Joe? Yeah. Joe Exotic. Been, Joe Exotic. Joe Exotic. That's real name. Go yeah, go to the yeah. zoo, go to Boys Town in Chicago, and go somewhere in the south, and you just combined all three of those things, and bam, you got yourself Tiger King. That's cool. that's what it is. <laughs> Carol Baskin. And it's fucking awesome. <laughs> Jed, you can't make a joke. Okay. You've never seen it? Fine, <laughs> fine, fine. But yeah, I know, so like, me and my brother were like the same no, way. No relationship just... to Carol Baskin. <laughs> We would just quote fucking without a paddle for like weeks after we watched those movies. And my dad was like, I felt bad for him. Like me and my brother were pretty into those movies. But like, I. They were pretty funny for, you know, the first couple of times. My dad had to watch those like that movie like 40 times. Listening to these two kids just repeat the same shit over and over again. It was hilarious. Looking back on it. So funny. <laughs> That's fucking great. You guys turned stone or the hooks. That was. That's a good funny movie. Looking at the next, out in the second middle one, of the woods. <laughs> second one was not as good. They brought in like different people. They not the original second guys. One. Yeah, yeah, I they did. made a second one. <laughs> uh, without a paddle, call of the wild. I think like one person. I think Seth Green comes back, <laughs> and that's it. But I, I think I, honestly, I think it's just totally different people. <laughs> Seth Green trying to get some goddamn movie time. <laughs> honestly, Seth Green. I think my favorite movie with him has to be one of the Austin Powers movies because he played Dr. Evil's son, Scott. Those God. were so fucking funny. They're like what? Like, because they were just making fun of how ridiculous 7, 11, uh, 007 movies were. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Don't make you run, D. That was so Don't make you switched on. Fat Bastard was the best character ever. <laughs> In those movies. It was played by Mike Myers still, right? <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah. He did He did the majority of the... Yeah, the, like, he did what, what he Austin like... Powers, Dr. Evil, Fat Bastard, and Goldfinger, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah. Not not Goldfinger. Gold Goldmember. Goldfinger was the real one. <laughs> yeah. My wiki was, was the, a key. <laughs> the dude that played uh, his dad, Michael... Uh, Sheen? No. It was the British guy that played uh, Austin Powers' dad, Michael, uh, not Michael Keaton, but, uh, uh, fuck, he plays uh, Alfred in the, as the butler, as uh, Batman's Michael butler. Michael Caine. Michael Caine. Michael Caine, yeah. That's a damn good actor right there. Dude, oh, Michael yeah. Caine is awesome. What, uh, what, what is I he could, doing now? I could totally be wrong, but I think he comes from, like, the rough streets of London or whatever. 
No, yeah, he had he had some like real person growing up. He did not grow up in luxury. He grew up in the shit. He knows he's oh, he's yeah. he's a real dude. He's a real dude. It's pretty cool. <laughs> really cool dude. I think he was like in the war too. I think he was in not the not like war. Not like World War Two, but like some like no British way. war. I think he was um, in the military. Okay, I think he was in the military, is what I'm saying. I think he was in the military. <clears throat> Maybe. I don't know. But yeah, Michael Kine. Absolute legend. Sir Michael Kane, I believe. Maybe. Oh, really? Probably. I'll check. I feel like I'll check. How 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 is that? Whenever uh, whenever you're in England or whatever, you're from England, you then you get knighted and you get the sir in front of your name. That sounds fucking. Is that a I really think it's big like the same thing? thing. I feel like it's the same thing as like on YouTube. If you get a thousand subscribers or something, there's like yeah, okay, <laughs> you're <laughs> notoriety. You're yeah, he is. Bit. He was knighted by Queen Elizabeth II. Nice, Sir Michael Caine. If you make it from England, it's like. No. So when are you gonna get knighted? That's basically I it. I think my probably my favorite Michael Caine movie would have to be The Prestige, and it also has Hugh Jackman and Christian Bale in it, and they're like they're like all magicians. Yeah, they're magi- That's the magician one. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Does he play a pretty big role in that, Michael Caine? He's like he's like the mentor of uh, I want to say Christian Bale. Uh-huh. But it might have been huge. He's one of the mentors of it. Like, he's like the old guy that they both kind of grew up like studying under, and then they ended up like fighting back and forth for like who's gonna be the best magician. And man, it's wild. It's such a good show though. Which a was... Christian Bale movie? That's hard. Probably one of the Batman's. Sorry. Yeah. American Psycho. Yeah. American Psycho is really good. That is true. I don't know. I, uh, I mean, it's so not long, like though. I said. It's uh, it's not a bad movie. Like I've said before, with movies, it's like it's not a bad movie. It's a little bit better than good, but it's not. I don't want to watch it more yeah. than once. Yeah, that's kind of how I was with uh, Ex Machina. It's like a sci-fi thriller where this guy makes um an AI, and he invites. It's actually um so. D- Poe Dameron from the new Star Wars movies, he's like the creator of the AI, and General Hux, the like ginger dude, he's the guy that he brings in to test it, and like seeing them in like the reversed roles of like you know good guy and bad guy reversed, it's a total mind fuck, man. If you haven't watched it, I'm pretty sure it's on Netflix. Ex Machina, really good, really good. Hmm. It'll make you think. I started About, Venom last night. Ooh. Which, One thing I like about Venom, I didn't finish. He, he wears the same sweaty ass hoodie the whole fucking movie. He does. <laughs> he's not. He's I mean, not I didn't finish it. Good, but I... good outfits all movie. No, he's like, got he's broke as shit. He's got really bad habits, and he wears the same dirty sweaty ass hoodie the whole time. And I'm like, that's that's some true shit. Hmm, I haven't seen that, but it feels seems nice. I don't. I don't really know. I'm not. Uh... Not a big fan of Venom. Like it's the Spider Dude, right? Spider no. Man. No, no, no. That's <laughs> oh, no. that's that's where things got a bit screwy with Spider Man three. Yeah. Venom's an alien that comes and like binds to a host. So like actual Venom is very different from Spider Man Venom. Oh, okay. Okay. Like it's the same Maybe. Venom, but when it's just on a normal person, it's different than when it's on Spider Man. Ah. Uh... Okay. I would definitely look up the the movie is really good, really good movie. Crazy, crazy cinematics. I finally watched the Joker movie. Oh, the Joker, dude! And I thought that was pretty cool. Fuck, it's yeah. so good. Joe Quinn Phoenix oh. knocks it out of the park. <laughs> mm. Yeah, he's a bam, that was a really man. good movie, man. Great Get what you fucking deserve. That's right. Kind of shows like what where where America's going right now though too. Like that's why so many people were against the movie. Like they were so like. Oh, I don't like the movie because it made them kind of open their eyes. Like, yeah, uh, shit's yeah. getting kind of weird. Pro protesters in Hong Kong were starting to paint their faces like Joker in the recent riots over here in Hong Kong. They're like, oh, oh, what do we do? Hong but, Kong's uh, fucked. Hong Kong now is crazy. Fucked. You see how many people they like they've been arresting and shit. All those people are dead. 
if you stay in Hong Kong, you're dead. That's what that's, that's what I've, so I've fucked, come up dude. with. Pretty much. So bad. That's, that's bad, so man. fucked, man. You gotta have. <clears throat> man, you gotta be free, but, uh, dude. Not the illusion not, of like, free. You gotta be yeah. free. They've had all these freedoms, and now communist China's taking them away. Yeah, yeah like 20 years early, right? Because they sound like a 100-year agreement like 80 years ago. And now China's yeah. like, mm, screw that. We're just going to take it now. So, oh, yeah, that's, that's what China does with everything, though. They, True shit. They play their own game. Yeah, a lot of people think that uh, yeah. if Joe Biden's elected that we're just going to be sold out to China. It's like, oh, I could, I could kind of see that because – like look at the NBA. Look at look at like major networks. Like kind of fucking China grab like the grab grabbed him by the pussy there, kinda you know. Yeah, a little bit. But I'm like not to if you look at Joe Biden's like they could have picked somebody better than Joe Biden. Cause like oh, dude, of course. why the fuck have you seen the way he talks? Like <laughs> it's like, dude, how the fuck are Joe you gonna Biden, you're gonna put Joe him Biden's not there. Trump? You is this? Yeah, he's not. Yeah. If you look at like his interviews doing? from 2008, he fucking he was spot on. He would like ramble off these big words, elaborate sentences, things that he would not mumbo jumbo. Look at him now. He's like, uh, the uh, the fucking yeah, man. Like it's Four like years, he's so right? struggle bus, dude. Yeah, struggle bus. It's like oh. they couldn't elect anybody better, more more uh, savvy. To get at Trump, mm, no. like, yeah. what the we fuck just, are you doing electing that guy? You fucked is up. The, is this a rebuild year? You think for the Democratic Party? Uh, you like how sports have a rebuild year? They always say the Cubs is a good one. Cubs are like, oh well, next year we're gonna. It's it's like opening yeah. day next year. Uh, <laughs> Maybe the Democrats yeah. are doing that. Like that's what, it just doesn't I seem like they're actually putting real people up there right i kind of have a conspiracy about the whole thing well Biden before is like we, robot. Mm. i get what you're saying before we <laughs> get too into politics i want to touch back on the joker so joe queen phoenix went on jimmy kimmel live right and it's like you know yeah. a newscast yeah. interview and he's like i know why you brought me here jimmy you just brought me here to make fun of me and jimmy's just like i don't like Ooh. this is going <laughs> and i don't know i saw the movie <laughs> and uh, it was just a joke, of course. But yeah, I my no, thing is the no, minimum. No, it wasn't, Jed. Yeah, fucking. Yeah, everybody. On the show. On Jimmy no Kimmel Live. Joke. Fuck it. <laughs> but um, my thing is like the minimum age to run for president is thirty-five. When was the last time we had anybody even close to thirty-five run? We need to put yeah. a maximum age on this shit because this shit's yeah. getting too fucking. Too fucking much. Like someone that's in touch with constituents, someone that is young enough to know what the fuck working class still is. Well, that's that's why it was thirty five because that was like the median age when they made it was thirty five. Talk but about now, a limit on the on like yeah, the yeah. age cap. Um, what was I saying about? Oh, uh, I have a conspiracy about the whole thing. So here it is. So the West is mostly capitalism, right? Like, that's, like, our thing. <clears throat> so here's the conspiracy, all right? So you got the left, which hasn't even been the left. It's been far left. You're not even... When you talk about a uh, liberal, the fuck are you doing, Mark? Um, I'm coughing. <laughs> are you good? <laughs> yeah. you were like, I'm going to throw up. <laughs> Uh, no, I was just. So if you, uh, did I not mute it? I thought it was. No, dead. you did. You okay. muted it, and I was like, I didn't. No, you didn't mute it, or you did mute it. Okay. Uh, uh, so like the left has become unrecognizable if you think about it. Like, like, because I used to actually almost be a liberal, and then I was like, yo, I cannot relate with how the left is now. So like. Obviously, I'm more in the middle, but like, so they've made this uh, huge, um, huge, like, you can't even identify it anymore. Like, the left is always radical anymore, right? So, m most people, if you're 
if you are um, not left-leaning, or if you even if you were a liberal in the sense that it used to be, you're going to lean more right. And I feel like this is on purpose. I feel like Donald Trump is going to be elected again on purpose, like without a doubt, he's going to crush the competition. And because they picked somebody like Joe Biden, I feel like this is all very, uh, yeah, this is conspiracy theory shit, but it's like, it's very mapped out, particularly in a good way to favor the Republican Party. It's oh, It always has been. Like, mm -hmm. they had all these people that they could have put in to power, but they they chose Joe Biden, the guy who can't even fucking get a sentence out without, like, it, it, having a glitch in yeah. the system. Like, I feel like there's this big plan that, like, nah, Trump is supposed to be in office. This is how it's supposed to be. Yeah. Because if you look at it in a, in a certain way, like, we're trying to keep capitalism in the West because— that's just the way things have always been. Now, here's where the conspiracy kind of uh, gets like you're like, well, well, why would they do that? Like, what's the evidence? Like, OK, what about <clears throat> why haven't we seen any libertarian or third party actually make it actually fucking make it? Because, because they've been constantly pushing in a narrative that the third party never gets enough votes. But that because of, or because of them pushing that narrative, they actually don't get enough votes when they would. Dude, I think like if an average American, like why do you think there's so much hype within like oh left right left right left right? It's they're it's divide and conquer number one, and number mm -hmm. two, it's so that you forget about what happens when the left and the right meet. The fucking middle. There's a party yep. in the middle that doesn't get any recognition because why? It's good for the American people. It's actually mm -hmm. fucking good for the American people. Less yep. government, which the government doesn't want. Uh, it's less regulation, less uh, less on lesser. Uh, what am I trying to say? Lesser penalties for like drug crimes and shit like that. Yeah, like, shit that makes sense is right in the middle, and we should all want to be right in the middle. Instead, they play these power Balance. games of left and right. <clears throat> yeah, and it's like. Okay, why, like, we were keeping, we're just going to keep it basically Republican the whole time. Like, even Obama, he was more fucking Republican than Democrat. Are you kidding me? He dropped bombs on so many fucking countries. You talk about, uh, talk about the border. You want to, you think Trump was bad on the border? You should have seen what Obama did on the border for border patrol or for uh, border control. Like, I feel like. No matter what, it's like a you can be a a left like like Obama disguised as like you, obviously you have to do something to 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 help your party like the left or whatever to like your ideology, but mainly it's been on the right, and I feel like it's one big conspiracy to keep everything, you know, capitalist and government power, shit like that. Not saying that capitalism is bad. I'm just saying. The government doesn't want to relinquish its power and give it back to the people. And if it was so that, that it's in the middle, like a uh, libertarian or any other third party shit, it's like that's gone. It's out the window. We don't want people to be free thoughtful. We don't want people to be uh, – we don't want them to be anti-capitalist, uh, you know, shit like that. So it's like you kind of have to keep them on – the fence is either left or right because either way whatever president gets in they're gonna do uh, a, a power grab and they're not gonna relinqu relinquish power to the people yeah i don't know i think maybe the democratic uh party's like setting up for something big you know we should be like we'll put up a couple bad candidates against trump let him get elected and then by the time you know he's done his eight years the american people are ready for something big some kind of big change we're gonna Spring something on them, you know. Put something crazy. Most America's gonna... doing really, really good, and then they elect elect uh, Mr. Junior, Trump Junior. Oh God, no! That man <laughs> always looks like he lost his keys. <laughs> look at his look at his pictures. He always looks like he just realized he lost his keys. What kind of face? Eric Trump. Yeah, check it out. Mm -hmm. I, you know what? You know who I want to see in office. 
I want to see Elon Musk in office. I, I, I don't know. I don't uh, know what you're talking about. I don't want to see him in office. I'm he's talking about so Donald. Ju- I'm talking about. I said Junior. I said Don no. Junior. Not fucking. I don't, I don't no know. one cares about that guy, Eric. <laughs> like. No one cares about Eric. Fuck Eric. Oh, you guys hear that? Apparently, Eric Andre is going to be taking over the Ellen Show. Really? Well, yeah, I heard that Ellen got basically yeah, has been canceled. ripped apart from canceled. Hollywood. Yeah, cancel culture. Mean Wait, like Ellen canceled. got canceled. Ellen got canceled, but the show is <clears> going to go on as Ellen, but with Eric Andre, who everybody dude. Knows called Ellen. Hold on a second. So it'll be the Eric that... Andre show. No, it'll be Ellen. <sighs> That brings me to another conspiracy. Hold on. <laughs> because, okay, I, I wasn't really paying attention to this conspiracy shit because, well, this particular conspiracy, because I was like, that doesn't make any sense. Like, some of that is really, really far-fetched. So, there was a conspiracy out that said, like, this whole COVID thing was so that, uh, and I don't, I, like, like I said, I didn't believe this. But now I'm starting to question it because Jed just said Ellen's gone. Like she's um, – anyways, so there was a conspiracy saying that either either that COVID started this whole thing or whatever. But like you know how like you know Jeffrey Epstein, Little Black Book, shit came out about Hollywood elite pedophiles, shit like that. Save the kids or save our kid, children, whatever the fuck. So like there was this huge uh, restructure of Guantanamo Bay. Where like shit was built up pretty pretty extensively, like a couple miles or whatever. Maybe not a couple miles, maybe like a mile, because a mile is fucking uh fucking five thousand two hundred and eighty feet. Yep. Um so like there was this structure that was being built up there, like spread out and built. So this theory was like, okay, during COVID, they're gonna arrest all these all these uh high high people like Tom Hanks, Ellen all these people that were involved in the actual like human sacrifice bullshit like that. Like, and then they're going to like put clones or something up or they're just going to get rid of them completely. And no one's going to know. And no, no public would know that like Tom Hanks or Ellen, like people that people look up to are actually in like Guantanamo Bay or some shit. But like now that you just said that Ellen is gone, cause like they were like, they have to come up with a reason that, um, that they have to come up with a reason for them to be gone. Like they can't just, you can't just get rid of Tom Hanks right away and be like, eh. So that's why like, oh, he moved to Greece. Oh, well, uh, Ellen's doing this, blah, blah, blah. Like as soon as you said that, Jed, I was like, wait a second. Cause like wait, there was man. a, there was these videos where um, like Ellen was wearing this shirt and it said run for us, run. And she was telling Tom Hanks like, hey, Tom, watch the fuck out. They're coming for you. Like shit, like that. Like there was just these little these conspiracy things. theories are fucking dude. Bothered, though. <laughs> they're fucking I, so. I hope elaborate. it is true because that sounds way cooler than not being true, right? Dude, <laughs> honestly, <laughs> with everything going on in the world, I could believe, but just about anything at this point. Honestly, yeah, I'm the kind of the same way. Like shit's too crazy right now. It's too yeah, 2020 weird. Has turned everybody into conspiracy theory people, like. I believe a little bit of this and that. Yeah, I, I don't know about that one. It seems way. I didn't out either. There, but I, you'd have to. I'm doing a shitty fucking job at explaining I, it because it's something I I barely saw. I looked into. I'm trying to like piece it together so I don't sound like a fucking idiot. But I clearly <laughs> failed at that. So no, I'm gonna send you like I'm, I'll try to find it and I'll send it to you because then it did it did a way better. I didn't do it justice basically. But. <laughs> Is, is it on infowars.com and the guy talks no. about this? <laughs> no, it's not on that. It's uh, <laughs> just some, I think it was just some YouTube thing. That, yeah. Uh, yeah. But, one, of, one of my favorite conspiracy theories is like an older one. It's about the Denver airport. If you look at dude, it from a sky view. Creepy. Dude, yeah. If you look at it from a sky view, it makes like a swastika, first of all. Second off, the barbed wire is on the wrong side of the fence. It's on the inside, which is typical of like prisons and shit most like military complexes will have it on the outside people don't go over it and like come in but denver's is on the inside like people are trying to get out just it's very strange also there's like a bunch of underground tunnels and and like places that 
nobody goes but they, everybody knows about and like the murals like mm-hmm. just google that's the big thing, denver yeah. airport murals it's like well, who the fuck allowed this to be in an airport they took like, some down yeah. they took some down yeah, eventually. They took some down but really? they're still yeah. wild you don't see this when you move but like <clears throat> yeah Oof, the horseman airport. The, yeah. the horseman of the apocalypse yeah. dude yeah. and you know you know the guy that made that when he put that in the head fell off and killed him the horn like it impaled him oh my oh. god Oh yeah, you're just talking about the one big yeah. horse that's there. Yeah. Yeah, the horse of the uh, like the, they say it's like the horse of the apocalypse, which is like, dude, fuck. Let me look this up real quick. Uh, I want to get this right. It's like has like glowing red eyes and uh, it's it's ginormous. Oh. <laughs> Somebody put <laughs> lasers on a Gandhi statue in India, and that was hilarious. Like it's just you know Gandhi silhouette. <laughs> bright red eyes and it's like oh god gandhi's coming back so, with a vengeance yeah and that's kind of what that horse looks like like it's 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 creepy looking because yeah they, like they it killed the glow, artist like, like it's an... i am become death okay it's called the mustang right and it says here like the uh, car shed all right <laughs> so as i was saying uh i can't pronounce his name but it's up here Luis Jimenez. the Okay, so the part is true. So he did die, but it is but is it cursed? His name died in 2006 at 65 after a part of the Mustang came loose while he was working on it. It severed an artery in his leg and he bled to death. Holy shit! Oof, yeah. That's fucking crazy. That is nuts. Fuck, dude. Damn. And then his family, like, finished it up and set it up there or something like that. Yeah. I think so, yeah. Or they had it done. Somebody finished it up and then put it out there, and then it's just supposed to be, like, really creepy. <clears throat> People, like, look into its eyes and then have panic attacks. There was, there was stuff like that. Talk. People really? had talked about that, too. Yeah. yeah. And how it was just kind of a really eerie oh. kind of statue. Imagine if you uh if you set up like a motion sensor by that statue and hook it up to a speaker that just plays like the black ops like fetch me those souls anytime somebody walks by it. Imagine <laughs> if they did that, it'd be hilarious. You just you know go well, to the airport. It's like and, you can't walk by it. It's like super out. Yeah. A, like a I'm sure you'd get there. like security but, would be called on. <laughs> yeah, they have to get like special camera crews, but I get what you're saying, like Make it even worse for people. Like, right. feed into the conspiracies, right? What if, down. what if they just fed into all these conspiracies? They started fucking with people so hard at the Denver, Denver airport. Like, fucking the statues yeah. talk to people whenever they walk by. Like, it's all real. Help me out of here. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, Denver airport's probably, like, 50% everybody's high. 50% probably. of the people. Cause oh, my God, crazy. dude. That's crazy. And to think about like <laughs> and then they're just fucking with people that would be that would be the craziest trip ever i would go to it would be a vacation at the denver airport to go and just watch people get freaked out it oh, everything's feeding into it that would be that'd be yeah spot on perfect <laughs> i had to go pick a few friends up from o'hare and like i would definitely like go and people watch while i was waiting for them to land and that was fun that was fun but doing it in denver would probably be even more fun just because oh, here's boring. Places. Yeah, but de- yeah, with the creep factor, yeah, it'd be more fun, definitely. I need to do more traveling. That's why I want to come out and to see Lane in Denver next summer. There you go. Yeah. What, do, what do they do in Denver? They, uh, what? I said, what do they do for fun in Denver? Like how, like, how much of it is... I just hear people like go to Denver to hunt and like just hang out in the woods. Yeah. Oh, yeah. One with nature, I man. I will <laughs> definitely be hunting there. Yeah, sure. dude, I got hammocks. You can go hammock in the woods. Go grounding. I, Take a I've seen, uh, seen somebody that, uh, I think you guys know him, too. He's he's living out there in Denver. He loves it. I think, yeah, he's... Who? He's, <laughs> maybe he's in, like, the suburbs of Denver. He's loving it out there. Got a buddy. Uh, <laughs> I got a buddy. You guys probably know him. Who? Oh, I just don't want to say his name on the podcast, oh. but well, okay, put it in the chat then. We'll see it. 
Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, he's just blowing trees 24 seven and, uh, going on huge hikes. I was like, dude, that hike is awesome. Like going up these mountains and shit. It's so fucking cool. Dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah, dude. And I need to I need to I look up wait. trails around here. Like I could just like go walk trails for a day. That'd be a lot of fun. There's some caves up here I wanted to go check out too. Cause like I was watching your uh, your cave video of Okinawa, and I was like, man, I bet we have some cool caves around here too. That'd be really fun. Yeah, ours are all like. There's like more history to most of them too, which is kind of cool because like either somebody used it as like a like a shelter for typhoons and storms and shit for their animals, like farmers and stuff. Or then, um, like during the war, they'd hide out into hide out in the caves and stuff, like all throughout Okinawan history and stuff. And it's all formed just from like uh, water coming in through the roots and just like eroding all the land away. And then there's just like a cave right in the middle of this, you know, little, this hill. So it's, wow. it's neat. It's really neat. It's crazy. All right, everybody. Well, thank you so much for joining us on the episode four of the Gentlemen's Bureau podcast. Once again, of course, you know, like always, be sure to subscribe so you can see our content. Ring that notification bell so you get notified when we post again. Like if you liked the video. Just like if you didn't like the video. But, you know, either way, make sure to post in the comments what you liked, what you didn't like. Drop your favorite movie. I'll check them out. Maybe I've watched Maybe I haven't. He probably hasn't. He probably right. has he probably has it. There we go. <laughs> I, I watch the same three movies all the time. But yeah, put your favorite movie in the comments. Maybe I'll get around to watching it one day. Uh, and yeah, thanks for joining us. Yep. Thanks. All right. Bye. Bye.